Welcome to Roundtable Live for June 10, 2016. My name is Barry. I'm joined by, oh god, I just muted myself temporarily. I'm joined by Mathis Games, Rock Lee Smile, and Northern Lion. Hi guys, welcome. Hello. Hey everybody, hello. hello. It is pre E3 2016 week. These two over here up on the top are going to be actually physically going there. You guys stoked? No, yes. it's a bucket Yeah, I mean, I am. <laughs> I am excited. It's a bucket list thing for me. Yeah, I mean, no, I, it's on mine too. Ryan, this is your first as well, isn't it? It is, yeah. I'm excited, man. Mm -hmm. um, it's it snuck up on me. I don't yeah. know. When are you flying, man? Is you flying Monday I'm morning? Monday. I'll be in yeah. like two hours before you, so I'll probably just okay. get you at the airport. Oh, man. So you're leaving at like, like 7 a.m. your time or something. Ooh. Nine? Nine? Because I'm going to arrive at noon there. Noonish there. So yeah, I'm, I'm out at like 9.30, so I'll be up at like 6.30 because I can't sleep. What was your, what's, what's your <laughs> earliest plane flight that you've ever had? Whether it be for work or otherwise. Well, uh, it depends, like, when you cross the line from... From it being like, late, late night, night to early to morning? Early. Yeah, yeah, I got you. So. I've, I've had, like, some some 5 a.m. flights, mm -hmm. some 6 a.m. flights like when flights I went sure. to Sweden or something for Paradox, they had me flying, like, it was night and it turned into morning kind of thing. Oh. Yeah. I remember, I remember it being dark and the flight was, you know, dark. And as the sun was coming up, they had their morning lights come on in the plane. And it was, like, a slow thing. <laughs> I guess that would count as my earliest flight i like that man they, they, they try to they try to lull you into that sense of oh yeah no this is your body everything's okay it's normal you're adjusting but, there's, <laughs> there's always some shithead who's never been on an airplane before they like turn the lights off and then they open their window shade and they're yeah, like, like well, i paid for a window seat i want to look at clouds the whole time that's me that's you. It's not okay. of the clouds. I can't stop looking at the clouds out the window. It's so it's good. Not, there's nothing to be ashamed of, man. I think I could go there on a is. plane a hundred times. I'd still look out there and stare at the clouds, man. I it's gotta great. take if, pictures the whole time, too, which makes me oh yeah. oh, yeah. If the lights are on in the cabin, window shades can be up. If the lights are down, close the window shades so people can sleep. Otherwise, you got, like, one little, like, blinding star inside of the airplane <laughs> that just fills the whole cabin no. with light. So really, Look. it was dawn when I did it, and I was a little bit not sure how much I could crack it before it became No, disruptive. the minute it's, like, open, it's like, boom! Well, just like that's light. what I found out, and then I felt bad about it and put it back down for another hour. But by that point, it's too late, and you've already permanently damaged yeah, the sight of everyone the whole on the plane. plane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like, look, we're 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 flying through the air in a metal cylinder, and I know there's like that commonly established plane protocol that you're laying on us here, but I still think that we can pardon those who may still be amazed by the theatrics of it all, right? You got to give them that. You got to give them that time, that moment. Well, just it's, it's, it's scientifically <laughs> amazing, but just, if if it's bright outside and the cabin <laughs> lights are off to try to give people the chance to sleep. Don't open the shade. That's the. <laughs> you ever have like when you're landing, you'll be in like a like a three by three plane, and everybody will be like looking out the window, oh, and yeah. then like looking out the other side, and then looking out the window. They're not sure. Just, they they need to confirm, just, man. Just be cool, man. The plane's <laughs> gonna be fine. Probably, uh, and if it's not, it's not like you're gonna look out and be like, oh, we're in the Golden Gate Bridge now. Like, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> move <laughs> move to the right, you know. I just like the way the light hits the top of the clouds. That's all. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. On today's docket, we've got we got all kinds of E3 to talk about, so plenty of stuff there. Uh, Blizzard and Facebook are becoming best friends. What that means for you? Could Facebook be trying to steal your identity? Probably. Uh, also, uh, we're going to be talking about Watch Dogs 2 and Titanfall 2, all part of that E3 roundup, I imagine, with the predictions for the major conferences that we'll be laying down on you. Uh, as well as Mirror's Edge Catalyst, Dead by Daylight, and if we have time for it, I want to do a little bit of a retrospective on Gone Home, because uh, that was one of the PlayStation Plus free games this month, and Wife Taffy and I had a chance to check it out again, so uh, we never got a chance to talk about that, too. We were talking about this uh, before the show started today. That came out back in 2013. That was one of the, the, one of the big releases of 2013. That got a lot of people talking, so... I'm excited. We may... You know what? Uh, now I'm, I'm thinking about this right here on the spot, but maybe we should go back, maybe re-examine a few of those 2013-2012 gems at some point here on the show. That might that might be a little fun. Splinter Cell Conviction. Yeah. There we oh, go. Excuse favorite me. Game. Uh, it's Splinter Cell Blacklist. <laughs> oh, Blacklist sorry. I forgot great. which one you liked. <laughs> Man, what you eating over there? Nutty Buddy Bar. What the fuck is a Nutty Buddy? Nutty Buddy? That's what it's, Doug always ate. Uh, man, they're great. It's chocolate and then like the wafer cookies with peanut butter in between each one. Mm. 
I've heard I've heard the nutter butter. I've been told that I maybe it's am, nutter like, butter. Maybe that's what I call it nutty buddy. Well, I, I've it been told be I'm anti-American for not liking nutter butter, so I don't know. That doesn't make sense. Nutter butter has no chocolate. It's just a it's a wafer it's with a peanut sort butter of a, center. A tasteless cracker treat. Is it the one opinion. that's shaped like a peanut? Yeah, that's the one. Something that's like nutter butter. I've had those before. I like those. Indeed. All right, Blizzard Facebook. Let's talk about that. <laughs> yeah, what's going on with that bear? <laughs> so. Pretty soon here, uh, in fact, I'm pretty sure it's maybe even rolling out through the summer, uh, players will be able to log in to Blizzard's many titles using their Facebook profile. Uh, Blizzard and Facebook are in talks with one another to integrate Facebook's live API into Blizzard's current slate of titles, including, of course, Hearthstone, uh, World of Warcraft, Diablo 3, and there's this little shooter called Overwatch that people are playing. The uh, obvious thing here is that Facebook is massive, and with over a billion people at its disposal, obviously Blizzard would certainly like to tap into that uh, demographic jackpot, really, if you will, just like the, uh, the info storm that is Facebook. Uh, but there's also the, uh, the flip side of this coin, which is that they're also allowing uh, Facebook streaming integration to uh, come to play in their game, so... Overwatch, of course, would be a great game to be able to stream directly to Twitch from, but now they're seeming to focus more on getting Facebook streaming going instead, which I don't know if you guys, if this is news to you or not, but it's kind of news to me. I didn't realize people were doing Facebook streaming. Did you? No. No. And my question was, why is this a thing? <laughs> like, why do they care? <laughs> Well, okay, so Facebook streaming, I think that I, uh, the, the writing is on the wall there pretty clearly, that Facebook, again, they've got a massive audience, they've got the video player built into their um, website already, they, ha they have their own custom video player, so there's, there's a uh, framework there, I guess, as well. But I know, uh, well, I'm actually, I'm getting this story from Polygon, this is where you sent it from me, Nick, and they are streaming on their Facebook page all the time. They're playing Hearthstone on their Facebook page all the time. So I guess, I guess this is a new thing, and it made me think, we've been considering what may be able to compete with Twitch. Could it maybe be Facebook? Gamers fucking hate Facebook. They do. Look at the Gamers Oculus, watch man. Twitch. <laughs> Everybody's freaking out about the Oculus and the DRM, like, isn't that kind of the same architecture but if there's anyone that has the capability to compete with twitch this is like sort of a pseudo side story inside the blizzard facebook story obviously but i'm, I'm curious i know we have the obvious uh bad blood there with you know as you mentioned oculus bought by facebook and now gamers hate them universally uh and there's you know there's reasons to be s skeptical of facebook and what their actual end goal may be but it is interesting to think if Twitch needs a competitor and YouTube clearly isn't really the, the, the force that we thought they would be in respect to that, Facebook, it seems like the next logical counterpoint, right? Most, like, face, I see a lot of Facebook videos, but it doesn't seem to overlap. The people posting them doesn't seem to overlap demographically. Yeah. with the people that watch stuff on Twitch. Mm. It's only based on my anecdotal experience, but it's like people our age who... Nope, we lost them. Oh, I lost everybody. Which I like not... Oh, hello? Not, hold on, hold on, we oh, lost you. Hello? <laughs> Can you restart at the beginning of that point people again? People our age. People our age. Yeah, people our age, that's all we got. Mm. Oh, okay, yeah. People our age uh, that use it as like a social network and actually share things and like respond to people all the time. I don't feel like that describes uh, the average person that watches videos on Twitch. Like, I'm not really worried about like my friend's wife who always posts like new video or videos for expected mothers and stuff like that, taking her audience to Facebook or like my grandma who always posts like things that have actually been debunked in video format and then <laughs> like I, I feel like the audience doesn't really uh overlap much but i'm more i guess i'm more interested in the uh like using facebook to log into uh blizzard games yeah sure but i'm interested in a way that is not like um probably conducive to talking on the podcast like i'm interested in what that means for like player behavior standpoint because so many websites have integrated facebook registration now but people are still like total shitheads <laughs> even when like, yeah, yeah. they have like their career and their full name attached <laughs> yeah, to it they're still like yeah. really at assholes and also uh, i worry that because people tend to not secure things like their facebook account properly that 
you know, you'll you'll see people getting into their Facebook, going onto Battle.net, and then buying like a bunch of in-game currency or whatever to try to convert it to something. Like I know that with the Team Viewer stuff that happened last week, they they were buying a bunch of coins on Battle.net or something to get it out of the country. <laughs> or, I don't know really how it works, but anyway, that's pretty deep. I, I do want to give that person credit as an aside to anyone that's willing to be a shitlord on the internet with your full name attached to it. I mean, damn, I, you, you've, you've committed yourself to that behavior. Well played. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, I think you're, you're correct, though, in that the more interesting part of this is the fact that the uh, Facebook integration is happening with Blizzard. And I, I just, it's, it so clearly makes sense. I just, I, it's, it's icky. It's icky to me, you know? I, it's gross. Yeah. What's the value proposition? What are they offering people who already have an established user base on Twitch? Why would you want to stream there? What would be the advantage other than here's a new platform? Maybe oh, we've already switching... got a ton of people on Facebook. Mm-hmm. That would be the reason, I guess. If we're switching to that again, yeah, I, th- I think certainly uh, if you're looking at folks like, well, this is a terrible example, but say somebody like SoFlo Antonio, right? The, he's the guy that posts all those yeah. weird, ridiculous Facebook This is totally me they... when I do this and yeah. steal someone's video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My, my reaction when somebody else made this and I thought it was funny and then he puts yep. black bars on it. Yeah, that's that guy. But, Rebooting, yeah. Yeah, but he, uh, he obviously has a, a thoroughly established Facebook audience that he would probably be able to take advantage of here. And I think there's quite a few people as well who've got a good Facebook following that very well could see a lot of value out of this. It's just it's never really been something I've even thought about, you know? I never thought, okay, well, yeah, YouTube isn't really going to cut it. Daily Motion, I don't think, is going to be a really big competitor. We've got Vimeo over there that's another video website. You know, like, those are the things we think of primarily. But Facebook is is showing that they're at least interested in this area of, uh, you know, mass media, right? Like gaming in particular. They they have bought Oculus. Obviously, they, they've got an investment there, but they have... They've also just not really steered away from going this route. So it, it, it's a possibility, but it's also just all, not exciting at all. <laughs> That's the worst part. Yeah. The, even if this were to happen, I don't really want it to. This is, I, I'm not looking to go to Facebook for uh, you know streaming competition. I want to get away from Facebook as much as possible. And I was kind of feeling like that was the direction we were headed in. Yet I find out so many people are still very entrenched over there. Yeah. I'll admit, like, for some services, I will just use my Facebook login. Like, if they have the option yeah. to integrate it, I disable all the stuff that allows it to see, you know, or to post on my wall or whatever. Yeah. But, um, yeah, for stuff like Spotify, I'm like, why not? But I recognize that, I mean, I'm a little paranoid about this kind of stuff. So yeah. if I do it, I think that a lot of people will not even hesitate to do it. But I mean, it, it, this is again of my own butt. But the uh, the streaming stuff, I don't think it's really meant to compete with Twitch. I think it's just you know Facebook is integrating it into its platform. I don't think it's going to be like a game specific competitor to Twitch. It wouldn't be my assumption. But I imagine you know if they purchase well since they purchased Oculus, they're like maybe it would be good to integrate something like this into our platform and just kind of like double dip, you know, make money off of the purchase, not just on sales, but on keeping people on our website more. People who are streaming from Oculus, you know, yeah. they'll yeah. they'll keep them here, and we'll see what they click on, how much of it they watch, and we can use that to sell ads, basically. Mm-hmm. So it would be their demographic solution to live streaming. So it would run in parallel, not so much yeah. the competitor. Yeah, yeah, that makes more sense. Uh, yeah, of course. the The objectively cool thing about this is that they're also adding the go live functionality into the games directly, which is neat. Mm. But, uh, yeah, that's just sort of a, yay, that's cool. Yeah, streaming's not that hard. I don't know, I don't yeah, feel like it needs I, to be simplified that I kind of feel like that, too, that honestly. <laughs> I'm, I'm, starting to st- I'm starting to think, like, it's it, you're almost making it more complex when you build the streaming into the game, where, yeah. like, right now, we've sort of, we already figured it out. Like, it's not that tough for us anymore, so yeah. long as you let us oh. either capture the window uh, or we have the appropriate hardware. Biased. I mean, we've yeah, already yeah, figured yeah, no, it out, not everybody. Well, but at the same time, I think, like, the, uh, the ability for anyone to be like, okay, I'm going to go download OBS, and learn how to capture a screen region. And then mm-hmm. that's, I mean, like, that's sort of the, the barrier to entry <laughs> to, like, you know, like the very base level of uh, recording gameplay yeah. footage. But Tutorials everywhere. Yeah. I feel like anybody could figure it out if you yeah. just have about two hours of free time. I kind of agree as with a, you. Uh, as a 27-year-old, 
Facebook news feeds are already like really, really bad. Yeah, yeah. The only thing sadder would be the ability to watch the people who make the Facebook news feeds actually just like stream their days every day. <laughs> just quietly talking to themselves in your wall as you scroll up past yeah. them. Man, those are like <laughs> those are the new websites I'm seeing pop up. It's just like literally the idea is stream your whole life. Like, everything yeah, you do shit. is interesting. Yeah. Man, oh, it's like, like the, the one of the recent Facebook controversies in Canada or controversies that blew up on Facebook was like Kraft used to manufacture its ketchup or sorry, Heinz used to manufacture its Canadian brand of ketchup in Canada, but they moved the factory overseas and then French's, the mustard company, opened the plant back up and started making ketchup back in Canada. And there was like this, I stand with Heinz, I stand with... French's stuff. <laughs> and all I can picture is I imagining, like, scrolling through my Facebook and watching, like, ten different people pontificate about, well, it's just ketchup. I don't know. It's, it's Canadian people working Canadian <laughs> jobs, making Canadian ketchup with Canadian tomatoes. And, like, that may actually be the first thing ever where I'd be like, you know what? Maybe I just don't need Facebook anymore. We've gone too <laughs> I've, far. I've been on the verge so many times of just being like, I don't need Facebook. I just... Delete it, but then there's like the one or two family members that it's the only way I can really co- kind of keep in contact. Yeah, well, no, we yeah. I think we all have it's like those one or two people Ugh. that are like, okay, we have to stay on Facebook to be able to talk to yeah. these people because otherwise, for parents it doesn't and happen. relatives and grandparents to talk to each other, and yeah. I. I it's easier for me to just ignore it than to delete my account. Yeah, that's how I am, too. Which is like hilarious that month. that's, like, the, the arc that Facebook has gone through. It went from being the early adopter kids thing to this is what we keep so we can talk to grandma. It is. <laughs> Facebook has aged in, like, dog years. Yeah, like, man. It is, <laughs> it's now a grandmother who just makes a post that's, like, what are the first words that Jesus says to you when you get to heaven? And then everybody right. comments, like, wow, that's nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Facebook has become this thing where, like, I'll visit once a month or once every other month. I'll see just people yelling at all, like, family members and friends yelling at each other about politics. And my mom has discovered, like, Facebook memes. And she thinks it's, like, hilarious. Her whole feed is just, like, funny Facebook pictures that have, like, hilarious captions on them. That's all it is. Facebook legitimizing freaking minions for uh, 2016. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) You know what, though, man? I'm gonna gonna say that parents or older folks finding memes, I actually kind of find it adorable, to be honest. I think it's like, they're, like, experiencing this whole new section of the internet they didn't even know existed. Yeah, man. Last time I was home, my mom asked me how to pronounce the word meme. (laughs) What'd you tell her? I told her meme. Okay. Meme. You didn't want to mess with her. didn't tell her meme. She's going to end up embarrassing herself in front of some of the internet's most prolific meme makers. (laughs) Uh I think you mean meme makers, actually. You're really being disingenuous here. But the problem, I think Facebook is fine, except for the privacy concerns. But we fucked it up. When we got it and we were so excited that we added everybody, Mm -hmm. it's like we, we opened Pandora's box. But instead, it's like, hey, we said hi to each other once. Let's add each other on Facebook for the next decade. That's <laughs> We've set on realistic expectations. <laughs> the Facebook thing should be like, hey, we've known each other for a while. Is it cool if I add you on Facebook so we can connect more easily? Yeah. But in college, it was like, I saw you at this thing. <laughs> like, We're best friends. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to be inextricably linked until the 2020s. God so forbid if you took a picture with him, man, because then it's all over. You, you are permanently oh, yeah. locked to that person. Ooh, tagged and bagged, baby. Do you remember back, <laughs> I like that. back in the days of MySpace, you had your, your top whatever friends. Top, I was going to bring that up. I'm like, I missed the days of having your top eight friends, man. Did you miss it? I think... Th- I think no, that carried over into Facebook a little, and we had this thing that's like, well, we could only have eight. Now Facebook lets us have their top thousand. Mm-hmm. So let's add every person we can find, and if we have more friends, that means we're more liked by the world. That makes us better people. That was like, no, well, I mean, we we all just have our Twitter follower number to obsess over now, but that was like back yeah. in the high school days. You got to have as many now Facebook friends as mature. possible. <laughs> I mean, I'm a... how many Twitter follows you got? Oh, yeah, well, let me tell you. More here. than me. <laughs> Okay, that's, that's enough Blizzard and Facebook nonsense. Retweet but... that boy. Oh, yeah, Overwatch absolutely go retweet Nick's drawing of that boy, too, because it's actually it's, pretty uh, good. It's 447 and counting. That's, like, one of your better drawings, dude. I, I was really impressed nice. by that one. That was pretty really great. good. Yeah. Dracula Fetus said it looked like a 3D model. And yeah, was man, it was compliment. awesome. That was great. Okay, Thanks, guys. I'm trying to find it on Twitter right now. That's so good. 
Okay. Uh, let's go to... Let's just jump straight into E3 predictions. How about that? Oh, yeah. E3 okay. works for me. 2016. The big show. The big kabang. The Electronic the Entertainment the Expo. The big kabang. Mm -hmm. The big kabang. That's what they call it. You should check the marketing materials, man. So, big conferences. E3 2016 this year, you got all the, all the standard fare. You got your EAs, you got your Bethesdas, you got your MS, Sony, Nintendo, all that good stuff. I think we'll start off... Well, we can just do them in order, I guess, right? Chronological order seems logical. So, predictions for the show this year. Let's start with the EA show. On the 12th, they begin bright and early at 1 p.m., Eastern time. <laughs> it's, okay, it's 10 a.m. Pacific. I guess that's kind of early. DLC for Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Yes! Already on the way. Okay. Almost guaranteed that I'll be right about that. Yeah, you go ahead and start us off, Nick. What do you expect to see out of e that's, EA this year? That's well, it? That's what I know. Okay. <laughs> Beyond that, <laughs> uh, more Star Wars Battlefront stuff and I don't know. Fair enough. Jump in. Jump in. Uh, there will be a montage of EA Sports shit that makes Twitter oh, yeah. unsufferable right. for like yep. 10 minutes. Every, oh, another man's coming out. I can't <laughs> believe they would take to the stage to try to sell one of their biggest games ever. I don't understand. Who plays sports anyway? So <laughs> if you do that, you're part of the problem. But um, hopefully they bring out some kind of like ancient athlete that can help oh, yeah. sell. You know what? It's been a while since they really tried to push like... NHL, maybe they could bring out like Wayne Gretzky or something. Mark Messier, have him look really awkward. Well, um, I, I think we'll see. Uh, I think we'll yeah. I think Chat's right. We'll see. It's not uh, no, we're not gonna see the new Battlefront. Oh fuck, where where was it? Oh, um, Andromeda. We'll see Andromeda. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. the Mass yeah. Effect thing. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll probably see Andromeda there. And the Mass Effect Andromeda trailer will have a choral cover of choral. like some like a from a chorus or choir oh. of um your walking dead choral every time of like an early wow. 2000s like new rock song oh i want to hear thinking. i want to hear like, like down with the sickness that or something, was what i was gonna it, say yeah that would yeah. be great i want i i've or, heard i've heard the 86 year old man sing drowning pool now and now i just need yeah. a choir of children let's let the bodies hit the floor not that down with the, down with the sickness is disturbed, guys. Oh, that's right. Yeah, my bad. Not totally not, different. Oh, yeah. apologies. I I dare not. It's all right. Um, um I think they'll Titanfall two. Titanfall two is uh, basically confirmed at this point. Yeah. So that's uh, that was I don't know. That's a little ex unexpected for me as well. I know Titanfall did pretty well when it first came out, but then the community just sort of dropped off like rocks as soon as something else came along. I know that, like, they still have, you know, a handful of people playing, but I think even the people that play Titanfall can agree with me in that the community d dipped quite a bit after the initial launch. Yeah. But, a dipper. But, uh, yeah, a sequel coming along, so there's, there's a, a little bit of a surprise, I guess. I would not be surprised to see them do what they did with Hardline and just be like, you know, at the end of the Battlefield 1 showcase, when hype is at its fever pitch, be like, go sign up for the open beta right now we're gonna mm. run it like for like a week and then you know i mean i remember dude going to the, watching that presentation they'd be like hardline i need it like <laughs> where's my invite code i haven't gotten it yet and then like it comes out you're like eh, whatever yeah. but we're like mainline mm. i would not be surprised if they if they do that same thing where they're like you can go get the beta right now yeah. and then everyone's like "Woo!" i think they kind of have to you know like they they, they really got to just latch onto it right away or it's just going to go away again. Any other predictions for EA? Maybe a new NBA game. I Maybe mean, they're going to they're going to try again. So there was uh they just keep trying. <laughs> What's their do? Mosa? They've got to have a Mosa coming out too. I think yeah, that, that's got to be down the line, right? What sort of EA Mosa would we expect? I think uh, a, a Mosa set in the Mass Effect universe, maybe. You know, there's like a little bit of Commander Shepard mixed up with some... Oh, it's because there's like, what, three or four different alignments in that universe, so you could probably take one of those sides. Yeah, man, I think that works out kind of well. You, you get your, uh, what are the, what's the, uh, Sligarian? Sli sli Slytherin. Slytherin, yeah, the, the, the Harry the Potter Hufflepuff, house. Not the Hufflepuff, but the Slytherin, yeah. <laughs> 
There's a few different races there. I can, you can mix them all up. That could work out. If they make a Mass Effect hero shooter, they deserve to go bankrupt. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> okay, the time it. is not right for a uh, for a Mass Effect extended universe. I think. Says you. Dragon Age. Dragon Age. There Dragon Age uh, coming up. I don't. I don't think I'll see. I don't think I'd see anything like that from them. They've got. I think they've got. You know, Battlefield One. They're obviously going to be going all in with because the internet loves right. them for it. Uh, Star Wars, I guess something could come from that, but I, I, even then, I don't know about that. And then you've got. We're pleased to announce we're issuing a cease and desist to Galaxy Reborn. <laughs> <laughs> Love Everybody that on the show busting floor. Busting out in applause. Yeah, oh, that'd be good. Yeah, take them down. <laughs> so yeah, I think I think they they they've got like a big three that we're basically guaranteed to see this year in Battlefield One, Andromeda, and. Um, we were just talking about it. Titanfall 2. Uh, yep. So that's that's a pretty hefty lineup for them for this year. So I, I think that'll probably just about round it out. What about a new PopCap game? Have they been... Oh, they what been is doing happening? Oh, yeah, what's happening to PopCap, Garden Warfare man? Two? Yeah, just they just came out, out with Garden Warfare 2. Mm -hmm. They'll that's probably well. go hard on Garden Warfare 3 at this point because it seems to be all they care about now. Yeah, I mean... It's... Did Garden Warfare 2 come out exclusively for anything? No, it came out for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Mm-hmm. They might come out with another one. I don't know. Wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised. Peggle stuff. Peggle three. Sign me up. I love Peggle. Just the Plants vs Zombies is just insanely popular though, and mm. I mean, it, I I played a little bit of it and I I had some fun, but it's <laughs> it's kind of another one that's like, wow, this this has that many people that really love it. Okay, cool. Uh, right, and that, that is EA for the most part, I think. Then. Next one. If I can pull up my schedule of Rooney here again. I think it's Bethesda? Yeah, it's Bethesda. Bethesda! I think the 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 big rumor swirling around for the Bethesda is going to be the uh, Skyrim remake. Slash Elder Scrolls 6, I guess. You gotta, you gotta put those sort of lined up right next to each other in terms of hype. But, yeah. uh, Where did this rumor come out of? Because I only just heard you guys talking about it. It's been pretty recent, I think. It's... Uh, yep. It's... It's it's developing very quickly though, as far as rumors go. Like oh, okay. it's beginning to become a lot more concrete. Uh, it didn't really come from an official source, I don't think. Might have even just been a gaff thing, actually. But uh, uh, okay. yeah, we'll see more on their Elder Scrolls card game, no doubt. Yep. Um, if we see a remaster of five, cool. If we see the announcement of Elder Scrolls six, I'll be cautiously excited, but hmm. I'm kind of sick of their formula at this point because all yeah. the games starting to feel the same. That's fair. They're all kind of just reskins in a updated old engine. I mean, I, I understand like most engines are just built on older engines, but it's Fallout 4 was kind of just like a shinier version of the Skyrim engine. Uh, they need to do a lot with their formula for me to be like buy in. I think again, I really, I really want them to to create a much deeper game. And The Witcher Three did that for me. I kind of want to see. And it doesn't need to be that like The Witcher Three, but I want more depth and complexity to their games than what's available right now. I think the I think the Skyrim and Witcher Three comparison is really solid. Actually, I feel like they're kind of parallel to one another now. And not to mention the fact that like I've seen recently. Uh, some new posts coming up about even further Skyrim mods. Like people have been modding Skyrim for five years, and they're still yeah. they're still making it better. And it's like it's almost comparable to the way that The Witcher Three looks now. And I mean, like I, I think it's a clear choice there, though. Like, would you rather invest hundreds of hours into modding the game to make it look like The Witcher Three, or just play The Witcher Three? Right? Yeah, I guess that's yeah. sort of a well, that's maybe not the choice a lot of people make, but still, but. For Skyrim, for the remaster that to come around, that actually, I'm excited for that. I'm kind of excited to play that. I feel like a Bethesda polished Skyrim remaster, well, I, I know the idea of Bethesda polish is kind of a joke, but the it's it's uh, supposedly going to include all the DLC, uh, it will include mod support, obviously the graphics will be overhauled and upgraded and all that good stuff. But I loved Skyrim when it first came out. That was another one of the few that I went to a midnight release for. That was a big release for big me. Deal. Yeah, it was yeah. it was great. So I'm I'm pretty excited for that. Anything we'll see for... Dishonored two as well. Oh yeah, there yeah, we go. Mm -hmm. That'll be a big one. 
Dishonored 2 is going to be huge. I'm going to play through Dishonored again, I think, because I'm excited. Show of hands who played I... Dishonored. I still haven't. Uh, you haven't? I played a little, <laughs> but like Mathis, I'm going to... I'm going to play through it before the game actually, the sequel comes out. It's mm -hmm. not a terribly long game, if I remember correctly. No, it's only like uh, seven or eight hours, I think. It's like 45 minutes if you're Biznap. Yeah, I was <laughs> going to say, I watched Biznap <laughs> beat it about 15 times. Man, he is he's in, entertaining as a streamer. That is just, let's just make it as base level as a compliment as I can give him. Uh, I would not be surprised. Well, I, I mean, I think there's some obvious stuff. Like, I think there will be like some Doom, a Doom expansion maybe will get announced. That'd be cool. Mm. But even more in keeping with that, I think maybe Bethesda's like, hey, uh, Doom did better than we thought. Wolfenstein did better than we thought. Quake maybe we time. should just keep, like, doubling Quake. down on these, like, old properties and actually making new versions of them that are sick. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised thing, to see, right? like, like, a new Wolfenstein, honestly. They're good, they're good remakes, I guess, or relaunches oh, yeah. of these old franchises. They're I'm really not going to spoil, but I have to say, based on how Doom ended, I feel like they are setting it up for a sequel, uh, if only by the way that they're copying the, the previous trajectory of the original game and its sequel, and I won't say any more than that. Fair enough. Uh, but if you finished it, hopefully you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I would also say, and I'm going to throw Rob under the bus here, but he seems to think that there is going to be a uh, sort of like a new Vegas analog to Fallout 4 that w might be announced. Hmm. Uh, I, like handing off the property to another developer? Perhaps. Or that something's been in parallel development. But I also feel like they're not done milking Fallout 4 yet. Yeah. Sure. But this is all... I mean, we should point out that it's all conjecture. Complete but I conjecture. think that there will be at least one more big story DLC released for Fallout 4. It doesn't seem... At least it doesn't seem in keeping with the New Vegas model to just release, like... Automatron and then Far Harbor, and I think there's one more, yeah. but it's it's like the Wasteland. Uh, I, it might have even already come out, but I would not be surprised to see one more. But I would be stoked to see uh, like an actual uh, a Fallout 4 engine based more RPG style oh, yeah. Fallout. Uh, style. My my dream is give it up to Obsidian again. Yeah, like let me see yeah. Obsidian take the reins and. Make another game with uh, with that engine because New Vegas is my favorite of the two older uh, Fallout Three esque games, I guess. So it's just I think I've said it before, and it's, I'll say it a million more times. Obsidian writes a better story, um, while Bethesda creates a better, more interesting world to walk around. I agree. I think the cycle for Fallout Four is probably not done yet. I remember actually, I, I bought every fallout 3 dlc weirdly enough like, I, I liked it well enough that i was just like this is just it's so much fun i want to keep playing it i was like i think there were five five yeah there was anchorage there was the mothership and then there was uh uh oh there was like a out. brotherhood one right broken steel or something like that so yeah that okay. was that was great and i i while i'm no longer playing fallout 4 i i would fully expect that for at least another like year or so, I would expect more Fallout 4 DLC on the way before they start to announce any sort of uh, further spin-offs from the from the mainline oh. franchise. Yeah, they could announce it and still trickle the DLC in for another year. Yeah, entirely true too. Uh, Dishonored 2, I want to go back to real quick because I really liked Dishonored. I think that was that was another surprise sequel announcement for me. Honestly, I guess I'm just <laughs> I may be a little bit just surprised when any new IP gets a sequel. That just seems to be my formula at this point. Like, oh wow, it, it actually did well enough. That's great. Uh, the D Dishonored, I I really enjoyed playing through the first one, and it's it's got such a good vibrant world too like i'm actually interested yeah. in the characters there you know like i want to see their stories play out further so i'm really excited for that uh further bethesda speculation perhaps i think we've maybe rounded it all out that's about all i've got mm -hmm. yeah it's all yeah. I got. all right next on the list I keep misplacing the damn thing <laughs> why do i not just keep the schedule up shit uh, it's uh, going to be Microsoft. Microsoft starts, they actually start bright and early, 9.30 in the morning on uh, June 13th. What are we seeing from the uh, MS conference, y'all? We're going to see their new console announced, and mm -hmm. we're going to realize it is paired with an Oculus, or Oculus Ready. Mm -hmm. We're going to see a VR out of Microsoft at some point, it's and I happen, really right? think it's going to be built to handle Oculus, at least 
the headset itself and then the games made for Xbox are going to be made to run on the Xbox, not like plugging into the PC. I think we're going to see a VR out of Microsoft. I think it's going to be Oculus. Mm -hmm. The big question I've got is I've seen a bunch of reports saying that this codename Scorpio device is what they're calling it, that it's going to be compatible with 4K TVs. Now, I don't know if what they want us to read into that is that it will run games in 4K, but if they are implying that, I want to say that's very unlikely. Mm. No, there's no way. We had this conversation PCs before. PCs can hardly do it. Yeah, yeah. If we had this conversation either last week or the week before. PCs can barely, like, oh, the top of the line PCs can only kind of do 4K, you know, well. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's no fucking way the console's going to do it. Do they upscale it and it would still look bad? Is it just going to be, like, 4K video and, like, movies? Will the games run at five frames per second? Like, there's just no way they can do I it. I just kind of feel like it's super disingenuous that they're putting this as like a bullet point on what these features might be if they're because they probably won't be able to do it. So why do it at all? They're just marketing it on. Yeah, it's got to be upscaling. It has to be. Yeah, I don't like that. I've seen that already. It bugs me a bit. I sort of feel like for Microsoft. To make people excited, they need to throw kind of like a Hail Mary that is almost impossible to predict right now. I think, like, right. cheaper Xbox One and VR-ready Xbox One, which might be two separate units, is something yeah, for sure. Right. But apart from that, when you go down, like, the obvious list of stuff, I'm like, uh, okay, like, the Gears of War 4 uh, launch, or not launch, but probably an extended preview, um, new Forza, new... Yeah. Um, New Wolf Crackdown. Mm. Oh yeah, the like, Crackdown. I forgot about that. Yeah, I, I really mean people are that. people will be stoked about Crackdown, but I, mean, I don't think I, they're going to be stoked enough to be like, like everyone's just going to be like, man, I wish this wasn't on Xbox One, right? <laughs> I will <laughs> probably put it on Windows 10 exclusive, and I'll be like, well, shit, I'm still not getting Windows 10. So I, I think guess I'm not that's honestly going to be like a focal <laughs> point of the entire MS conference this year too. Is going to be games for Windows Live, and that's just kind of disappointing. It's another. It does feel like they. People care about the software once the hardware, like, foundational level is taken care of. Okay. And I think people, like, are just so, they have no, if they don't own an Xbox One already, they have so few reasons to get excited about it that they're like, why would I care about this game when I could just, I mean, either upgrade to Windows 10 possibly and get it or just play something else on a different console. Like, it has such, like, a poisonous problem right now of, like, a lack of inertia. Like, it's been out for so long, and people just don't care, by and large, about it. Like, even, like, I have friends who are casual game fans that, they, that I was talking about them last week that own Halo and play Halo, but they, like, are disappointed in their Xbox One purchase, even though they bought it for Halo. And they're like, well, yeah, I, I don't know what you do in that. And we have to always clarify that we're not trying to just be, like, Sony or PC fanboys, but, like, I think they have a real problem. that they gotta They gotta do something foundational to... To kind of shift away from it. No, nah, man. I'll say it again. I mean, like, I, I really hope it's not painted as me being a Sony or PC fanboy because I'm basically just a disgruntled Xbox One purchaser, right? Like, you I got a <laughs> free bag of buyer's guilt when you pick up your Xbox One. <laughs> like, I bought the fucking console. I was, I was quintessentially that guy. And I've said this multiple times on this show, but I basically bought the Xbox One to play the Master Chief Collection, and that whole thing fucked up. So I've I've been pretty much trying to justify the purchase since then, and I I struggle to think of what has done it for me. There was a long period after Master Chief Collection j fucked up entirely that that thing just sat in a box. Seriously, yeah, like yeah. I put it back in the packaging, and it was just in my closet. And now it's just sort of by virtue of circumstance that it's back out. I think I had a couple of games to play on it or something, but yeah, I think uh, what would probably excite me. The Hail Mary that I think you're talking about, I think it's got to be some sort of Oculus uh, cooperation like Mathis mentioned. I think, well, I mean, we have already kind of a hint that they're working together, right? Because Microsoft coupled in the Xbox One controller with all the Rift purchases. So there's obviously been yeah. talks and they, they, you know, they're working together. But it, I think it's got to be like a, a really out of the fucking box this is it's like boardroom speak that we're getting into right now honestly yeah because, i mean they may be in just as desperate of a situation as we kind of peg them to be right now but i think i think it's just got a really even hololens like isn't exciting because it doesn't feel like something that i can use it, it feels like oh this is 
fucking awesome future tech, but I'm never going to have this in my house. I need, like, a consumer-level, dope-ass VR setup from Microsoft. I want that from my Xbox this year. Yeah. Well, if they bet on it, they've got to bet big. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If they go VR, they're going to go hard on it because it doesn't seem like they've got a lot of other strategies... And I think it's got to be something like, you've got to compete with Vive, too. So you've got to have some sort of, I think, maybe even new motion controller technology they're working on. I mean, I don't think it's even far-fetched to assume that Microsoft was even developing something like that while they had the Kinect, or the Kinect team going full force for those couple of years that they were really determined to make that work. But, Man, like yeah. a different one than touch to go yeah, with the Oculus? Yeah, you know, like any, any sort of new peripheral, I think, could be pretty exciting, too. If they were to unveil something like that that works in conjunction with any sort of new Oculus-based console that they were to come out with. That would be touch exciting. coming out in just, like, a few months? I thought it was I'm by... I'm not sure. I, I couldn't tell you, but... Something this year? Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's... The, the, that's like hardware exclusively too and we haven't even really touched on maybe what sort of uh, first party Microsoft titles may be coming along but I don't know if there are many anymore to be honest well, we maybe like a, down the list already yeah. Gears Forza, and Halo and Gears. Forza <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh there was uh, okay there was more apparently ReCore maybe making another, another appearance for 2016 that was the one with the, uh, the do you remember the big blue orb trailer yeah, that that's what I thought year. you were talking about. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. That one looks That's one of those good. games I was like, we're here! And then they're like, gone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye! Exactly. We'll see you next year. So, uh, it's... I'm just actually looking up the news now. I guess it may even, even have had a release date leak, ReCore, so that's exciting stuff. So, if they show that again, that actually might excite me. I think uh, that trailer last year was pretty interesting, so I'd be interested in seeing more about ReCore. Uh, I've said cool. it time and time again that, like, at this point, I'm so out of touch with at least rabid, like, fanboyism for this stuff that this may actually just be wrong. Mm -hmm. But for me personally, the Xbox One, even though I own one, is kind of past the point where I can just, like, be excited to use it based on the software. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. it needs... So if the, even the PS4 has this problem for me, but it's got the exclusives that I like, so it kind of gets over it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But, like... It, they'd, for me, they would have to be like, here's like 10 amazing looking games. And then I'd be like, you know what? They're making like a real effort to yeah. to bridge the gap here between either PC or or PS4, depending uh, on your perspective. What about, there was another game that would, that made the Xbox like something I com contemplated. Is it canceled? Uh, it was the Platinum game. The Platinum game with the dragon. Oh. Uh... You know what oh, I'm talking about? Scale bound. Scale bound. Scale yeah, bound. Yeah, we are the guy with the like. It's like the future, but he has like a dragon pet. It was platinum, which okay, made me excited. Okay. Yeah, I remember now. Mm. I'd forgotten about that. 2017. All right, that was another one that was. I remember. Maybe, maybe we'll see some more scale bound. And we got the IGN gameplay preview up here, pre-alpha. Is that uh, like what platinum does now? Like they're the studio that you buy an exclusive from. To sell your console, <laughs> they gave Bayonetta yeah. two to Nintendo, and then they're gonna go for uh, scale bound on the Xbox One. Dirty cool. pattern. Good on them. Yeah. I like platinum. All right, right on. Todd well, Forey. Hey, platinum is hit or miss, man. They're like great, or they get like Ninja the Ninja this, Turtles game. Or the this Cora is like game. good platinum, though. Yeah, this, this is. is... <laughs> Really platinum isn't it like a theory? Platinum has like two teams going, like the A team and the the shovelware team. That's how it seems to be, like. Based on the fact that half of the stuff they come out with is like a nine, and half of it is like a three. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's really weird. <laughs> it would be weirder though if it was all the same team and they just had like a really weird period of inconsistency. <laughs> well, where did the Transformers game land? Wasn't that like in the middle between? Yeah, the that was like, it was a, like seven a five or, or six. I thought. No, I actually, heard yeah. pretty good things about the most recent Transformers game. I heard people were really enjoying that one. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I based don't know on that. your love of the series. The Legend of Korra one sucked, and apparently the Ninja, the Ninja Turtle one sucks. Nah. Yeah. Oh, I knew the Ninja Turtle one wasn't getting too well received, yeah. All right. Well, that might do it for Microsoft then. 
Next up on the list is good old PC gaming, if we want to even really give that the time of day. I don't know. Shorter. <laughs> I mean, here's what I'm... Yeah, that was good. I was just about to say, I really hope the PC gaming show is way shorter than it yeah, was last year. Yeah, yeah, And definitely. less awkward. Mm -hmm. It's always been <laughs> just sort of an afterthought, I feel like, too, you know? Well, like, that, this last year was the first time there was, like, a proper PC mm -hmm, showcase. Mm -hmm. It's a good initiative. Yeah. But they also, like... I sort of feel like they need to, as the producers of the show, and I love how we're talking, we know there's going to be cool stuff, yeah. so we're like, okay, here's what I want out of the show. Like, I'm not worried about <laughs> announcements, but um, I, I, they need the producers to be like, you don't need to be on stage to talk about your Guild Wars 2 DLC for 15 minutes. Like, you come up, show the trailer, it'll be out here, these are the features, get off the stage. Like, you don't need to have everybody that comes on sit on the couch for 10 minutes and explain what they're doing. Like, people, that's not what they're there for at E3. They just want, like, oh, shit, big announcement, Twitter. Big announcement, Twitter. Oh, snarky, snarky tweet. This doesn't look very good. Like, if they could make that a little, like, bring people on for cool stuff if it's amazing, if it blows people away. But, like, minor stuff, just, just keep moving. Announce it and keep moving. They got 90 minutes this year. That's, that's way the, better. That's last year was like show. three hours. Yeah. yeah, I would say, wasn't last year like five? It just never ended. Mm -hmm. Was well, Do we know it was actually three hours or did it just feel like three hours? I think it was hours? two, <laughs> honestly. It, literally it, three it hours. Was two or three, but it was long, yeah. I'm fine with Day 9 hosting again. He was great. Yeah, no, no complaints. So, and it's brought by AMD, isn't it? Uh, no PC idea. Gamer, I think, is actually doing it this year. Okay. And uh, they've got their list as well of what they uh, expect to show, or at least who they expect to show, which includes... Oh, AMD is on the list, too. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, New World Interactive's on there. You got Oculus, Paradox Interactive, Square Enix, Relic, and uh, a few others as well. Looking like a pretty good Is that lineup. an invite-only show, Ryan? We should go to that one. No, that's a free-to-attend. We <laughs> shouldn't go to that All you gotta if do is reserve there, a yeah. ticket. I'd go, well, okay, we're fucked. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, my E3 ticket about. doesn't get me in? God damn. I'm not paying to watch ads, for one. But also, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's probably already spoken for, is my guess. But uh, that's cool, though. Yeah. I would go, absolutely, yeah, if, if we can. Do it. All right, cool. Do it. Report back. PC show, sweet. Yeah, all right. Uh, well, is there any? I mean, we don't. Sony? We don't know. Did we a talk lot Sony about, already. We will talk Sony. I, I just want to make sure we're not like completely brushing over the PC gaming aspect because I'm pretty sure they're keeping things under wraps for the most part. But I don't know what exactly we want we to hear really, from them. It's, yeah, we never it's really. It's just like, man, I'm in this space all day, every day. Like, mm -hmm. I find this news out anyway. <laughs> this is not a huge thing for me. Yeah, uh, if they could talk about like how awesome your new fucking four-way SLI NVIDIA 1080 mm. deal would be, that would be fun to watch yeah, for five minutes. You show me for you, me. You show me 4K <laughs> on four SLI 1080s, and we're in business. Because that would only it cost work. like thirty five hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's not that. I think we all get free uh, three free 1080s when we go to E3. Oh, so dope! I'll give you guys one. only Thanks, three. Man. You got to buy the fourth one yourself. Yeah, that's where they oh, get. What you. kind of power source would you need to run four of those? I give you one of those too. Hadron Collider, <laughs> part of the swag bag. Good deal. Let me, oh, dude, that's a good question. E3 2015 swag bag. Oh come on! <laughs> Tiny now. pack of magic cards. All right, well, no, uh, that's packs bag. <laughs> you got me curious. Did you find it? Mm, it looks like the swag bag is based on, um, like, the booths. You don't actually just get the swag. Oh, you got to. Like, oh shit! You got to make the that's effort. That's gonna be an. It's going to be my own ARG. How much can I get from <laughs> each one of these booths? Yeah. Do it, dude. Okay. Well, Let's do... Uh, oh, we'll get to Ubisoft. How about that? Ubisoft's got, uh, I think, probably a pretty big lineup this year, actually. Of course, they've got Watch Dogs 2, one of the big ones. Yep. Uh, we should be seeing the next South Park game, which I totally forgot about, the Fractured Butthole. I'm down for that. Mm-hmm. I like saying that one out loud. Uh, For Honor is another game coming around from I'm Ubisoft. I'm excited for that too. So, yeah, you've seen, you guys have seen For Honor? I am pretty. I'm pretty excited for that. It's, uh, Are they doing the number four? No, for the they're going to do F O R. Yeah, they're. They, they ruined Damn it! it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's like the that's like the Viking theme, and uh, just really that that alone almost uh, sells me on it. So excited for that too. You should call it Thor Honor. Oh, I like that better. Yeah, that's pretty good, actually. Yeah. Uh, what are you guys excited to see out of Ubisoft? Mathis? 
Uh, see, I'm so lo- like okay. I'm excited for For Honor, but uh, hopefully, it'll, I wonder if it'll be playable there. Um, but I'm so Probably. if like E3 in general, I have a healthy amount of like, eh, well, we'll see how it actually comes out. Mm. I mean, Watch Dogs. See, the thing with Watch Dogs, people shit all over it, right? And they're pissed because it was marketed in a particular way. Yep. It didn't look like it was marketed. It didn't necessarily play like it was marketed, but it was still a like a solid game. Like it was a game that was not terrible. It was like a 7 or an 8, depending on how much you liked it. I'm excited to see what they've taken from the criticisms and make Watch Dogs 2, because the parkour elements in Watch Dogs 2 at least look cool. Mm -hmm. I like that. They do. I will give them Um, that. And apparently the driving is going to be a lot less shitty. It's going to be more GTA style, I guess, more Mm -hmm. arcade-y. But I'm not going into into any Ubisoft game going, oh my god, this is going to change the face of gaming. You're not doing this. What I'm about to say, you're not doing it. Okay. But I will say, I'm living in the worst possible future that branched off of the, the darkest release timeline. of Watch. Yes, the darkest timeline, precisely. Because now, there's a, a budding narrative that I expect to pick up steam if the marketing material is as good as it usually is from Ubisoft, that Watch Dogs 2 is going to be a redemption game. It's going to be, mm-hmm. to with the Watch Dogs series, what Assassin's Creed 2 was. Yeah. And... The reason it bugs me is not necessarily whether it's right or wrong, but that I was there when Watch Dogs came out being like, it's not actually like that bad, though. Like, it's it's not great, but it's okay. And now people are buying into it. The last thing, it's like literally the last time you saw something. You're like, it's a piece of shit. And then you start hearing, hey, I think that piece of shit, oh, they've been shining it a little bit. In your head, it should <laughs> still be shitty until it comes out. Yep. All you right. shouldn't... It's going through the same, the same process they're, they always go through. They're going to create a false narrative around this idea that the first one, like the way it worked out, was the Hang way it was on, supposed guys, to work out. Guys, the stream out. is having issues. Oh shit! Chat is freaking the fuck out. Uh, we're dropping some forever. frames. I think we're good now. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> good. All right. <laughs> I think. Bye. All right. Continue. Sorry, All right, Nick. Go ahead, Nick. So they're going to market it around this false narrative that, like, the way it worked out before was the way it was meant to work out. And then they're going to use that to prop up the new one and give them, like you said, the redemption that they thought they needed. Um, So they're basically just creating a new world around what the perception was instead of what actually happened. I find that very frustrating. I agree. And if it's great, if it ends up being amazing, awesome. You know, like, most people don't really love grand theft auto won that much and then you know midway through the series it became a juggernaut if watchdogs does that that's totally cool but i hate that consumers are buying into it not right. on mass yet but they're starting to yeah. it's like hey misleading marketing led to us thinking this game was like really shitty but the marketing for the new one looks pretty good. And, and like, that means they get to screw you twice with the same premise. <laughs> All right, look. <laughs> I want to come to bat for Watch Dogs in general, okay? I really liked Watch Dogs. I, like, I say that because I, I've realized something about myself now, which is that if I play a game through to completion, I really liked it because that doesn't happen anymore. And I did that with Watch Dogs, like, on my own, not even making videos or streams or anything. I just played it, and it was really great for me. And I know the story isn't awesome, the character is this weird, forgettable hacker guy, and they've actually done away with him now in favor of, like, a group of hackers in the Bay Area. So that's kind of cool. But I I really liked it. <laughs> like, And I, like, I feel like the entire reason that most people shit on it is because it got downgraded which yeah it did but that didn't really take anything away i never felt like i was cheated out of an experience i didn't feel like they were pulling the wool over my eyes i just i had fun with watchdogs and now i'm pretty sure that i am you know in very familiar company actually because i'm seeing Watch Dogs 2, I'm seeing the hype surrounding it, I'm seeing this whole cycle start over again, and I'm seeing the fact that this trailer has fucking 3 million views in like 4 days. People are excited as fuck about this, whether or not they want to admit it or not. And I think Watch Dogs is a really great game, and I'm pretty fucking excited for the second one. That's... I, I, I wish that the entire fiasco hadn't happened and while again i'm not in favor of them downgrading their games and it's very clear that they did that but it's so blown out of proportion at this point that i kind of wish we could just do away with it and say 
you know what? Watch Dogs looks, it was pretty good. Watch Dogs 2 looks pretty damn good, too. That's my opinion on it. Just, you know, echoed in silence. We, <laughs> I, I don't necessarily disagree with you. I also beat Watch Dogs, and I thought it was okay. Mm -hmm. I was like, this game's all right. The only thing that bugs me is people shitting on it, also building the narrative that this is like the redemption arc. But I'm also of the opinion, like, people are watching, like, the Warcraft movie, which I have not seen, and they're like, yeah, it was pretty bad, but I'm excited for the sequel. And I just don't understand. It's like the same <laughs> psychology that I don't, that for whatever reason doesn't doesn't resonate with me. But, you know, different strokes for different folks. Yeah. If is great, and I look like an asshole as a result of this conversation, that's fine. If the game's great, that's the only thing that matters. But, I mean, we're talking about E3, and I'm bitching about, oh, marketing, marketing. But, like... Oh, yeah. I, I wish people would not buy into the, the marketing market, so much it's yet. It's funny to hear the people talk about just about the Warcraft movie because from what I hear, it's like, well, it, the reason people think it's good is because it didn't, like, shit on the lore and shit on the game. It's like, well, it's still an okay to bad movie, but hey, they didn't shit all over the lore <laughs> and make yeah. it good for the... So, thumbs up. It's like, that doesn't make a good movie. Great, they respected the world and the lore, but... If it's a shit movie, it's still a shit movie. Doesn't that so disrespect really it obvious. more than not shitting on the lore? Well, man, they didn't fuck up the game world, all right? I so guess. at least give them credit for that. They only fucked up their own world, and as long as they only fuck up their own shit, that's fine by us. People design the rules as they go, it seems. I don't know, it's just it's really malleable. Yeah, a little um, bit. My, my opinion on Watch Dogs is that I didn't think it was a fantastic game. I also didn't think it was an awful game. It was somewhere in the middle. I like sandbox games enough that I can pretty much always derive some entertainment just from dicking around in them. So that for that reason alone, I'd be just fine with playing with two, especially, and this is bolstered by the, uh, the parkour elements, which look good. Yeah, they do. So... Even if there's nothing more to the game mechanically than, okay, you can move fluidly through this world, I'll still have fun digging around in that. Doesn't mean I'll enjoy the game for what they tried to give me as far as a narrative presentation, but I have fun with things the way I want to have fun with them sometimes. Yeah. And I would probably buy it on that premise. Indeed. All right. And uh, you know what? Everybody here gets the right to buy Watch Dogs 2, because we gave Watch Dogs 1 a chance. Yeah. That's right. At the trash it. dance. Earn that yeah, shit. we... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> people were so looking for a pro I just remember people playing uh, uh, Watch Dogs and looking like for the smallest thing wrong and being like, they fucking downgraded yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. I remember people looking, going up to the windows and being like, the reflection doesn't reflect the thing behind it's me. fucking bullshit. bullshit. There I is saw that. An interesting it was bullshit, though. <laughs> to be had probably <laughs> at a later podcast. But there was that video this week that was like, you know, the promises Ubisoft has made and the ones they haven't delivered on. And I think there's an interesting conversation to be had about, like, what marketing material means in terms of, like, an implicit contract between the developer, the publisher, and the consumer. Because there's some stuff, like, it. there's already the disclaimer, like, this may not represent accurately the final product of the game. Sometimes you can hide behind that and be like, well, we took out this feature because of blah, blah, blah reason that was actually a great selling point. But sometimes it's like... You know, if they if they decide as developers that they want to like switch up the story or they want to go in like a different direction, is that actually like a lie or is that just something that happens when you're developing a product or a piece of software that sometimes you're like, you know what, this isn't working out. We've got to like back off from this and go somewhere else. And I think yeah. that's why I'm always like people even joke about it, say like anti consumer when I'm like, don't buy into the marketing material, but the marketing material is like a promise of something that does not yet exist. It's like, this is what this is going to be, but things, you know, they target. change as they're in motion, you know? Yeah. They don't always hit the target. And uh, what the funny thing is there, too, they can use it as cover. Even if they didn't mean to do anything malicious, the people who do want to use something malicious can use the fact that it's, it's a moving target as cover exactly. to really shit that isn't good. And there are, there are ads, I think, that are deliberately deceptive. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Have you ever seen the ad for like fucking Thirteen Dead End Drive or like any board game? It's always like digital characters getting like sculptures drops on their heads and stuff, and then you open up the box and it's just cards. Man, yeah, I remember I was watching the ad for Mobile Don't Wake games. Daddy back when I was eleven. And I was like, man, this looks like a bunch of fun. It doesn't even sh ship with an actual dad. It's like, man, what's even the point? <laughs> you know. Why you see, every mobile game has the same ad now of someone like in a real world place and it's being filled up with these CG objects or people doing whatever the game object is. Mm. That's just the ad now. Yeah. I, I don't know why that's the ad. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, uh, well, 
Other Ubisoft games of note, uh, mentioned briefly here, this new South Park game, The Fractured Butthole, uh, is coming around. That's what they're calling it? Yeah, The Fractured Butthole. The fra- <laughs> that's the, that's the, that's like the plan words. Butthole. Yeah, yeah I, you get it now. Uh, so, <laughs> from um, uh, last it. year's E3 was uh, when I believe they announced the uh, new South Park game. Did you guys play The Stick of Truth? Anybody? Uh, yes. Yeah? I yeah, finished right. it, actually. You did? How, what'd you think of it? I thought it was actually very good. Yeah. I would give that like a somewhere between like a, maybe an eight somewhere in there. It's pretty good. I'm more in the seven region, but I thought it was right. I I got a little bored of it, honestly. I, I think I I yeah. wasn't really w- wanting like a pure RPG sort of experience in South Park, but that is what that was, and what a, a lot of people liked as well. So I think that was clearly just an issue of my personal preference toward it. But I think it was too it was, easy. Like, was it pretty easy as well? It was way too easy. Mm. My problem but, was it wasn't that funny, honestly. Yeah. There wasn't that many great jokes I found. Ah, uh, whatever. It's not. A, it wasn't bad. Is the point? Yeah. Not. I thought that the bad. humor was like at the level of like your average South Park South Park episode. South Park. South Park. South Park. <laughs> Cat Pack. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited to play the new South Park. Though. I think even though I didn't really enjoy the uh, actual gameplay of the uh, first one, the Stick of Truth, I still was, you know, having a good time just because it's like I think the easiest recommendation ever for the Stick of Truth, and then probably subsequently the Fractured But Whole is going to be if you like South Park as a show and you are kind of interested in games, then you're probably going to want to play it. Bottom line. And I think that's all we've got for Ubisoft, right? Let's there's see, a new Ghost it. Recon, I thought. Oh, yeah, there's a uh, Oh, Ghost that was announced Recon last year, too. Yeah. What was that one? Uh, Wildlands. Yeah, that yep. was it. Ghost Recon I'm Wildlands. okay, like, if they keep making these tactical shooters pretty good. Mm. That's fine by me. What was the last, uh, what was the last Ghost Recon game you played, though? Mine was on the PS2. Well... Like, there was Future Soldier. Was that the one they did, like, all those betas for back in the 360 I think so, era? Yeah, mm hmm. Played a little Future Soldier. But yeah, it got I a little li- Future Soldier, too. The, the COD thing, and I don't even dislike Call of Duty, but, like, the advanced warfare kind of theme just permeated, like, every mm. shooter of that era, <laughs> which was the problem with Future Soldier, where, like, every gadget was from, like, the near future. But anyway, it's it was okay. But. Yeah. Rainbow Six Siege was good. The last Rainbow Six game I played was on the original Xbox. Yeah, Vegas. Uh, or no, that was that would have been just. The oh, original, you know what? Right? I yeah. did play Vegas. You did play Vegas so, as well. Vegas. You, you was actually Vegas too. There was also you a inadvertently. Vegas. You inadvertently caught me in a lie. I did not play Vegas too, though. Oh, okay, there we go. All right, and that is Ubisoft. See, what? Yeah. Wait, yeah. Vegas was Rainbow Six. Yes. Yeah, we were we talking about Rainbow from Six. from Ghost Recon I'm, to Rainbow I'm, Six. I got, you know, they get lost. confusing. Continue. <laughs> all this They're Tom Clancy shit, man. Uh, he's got... Man, I just, it just occurred to me. He's got, like... Is it three or is it four? He's got Ghost Recon, Rainbow Six, Splinter Cell, and... Hawks. Hawks. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. I oh, remember gosh. that. How'd you forget about Hawks? <laughs> there was only <laughs> one, I think, right? Hawks. Yeah. Oh, God. Was that going to be a franchise? That I was... mean, if it did well, I'm sure it would have been. Yeah, I guess so. I just tried to spell it with a Z. I thought they were getting a little, you know, no, that's too a little edgy with that. their marketing there. All right. Well, yeah, that's Ubisoft. Are we not seeing an Assassin's Creed this year? I mean, it's a possibility. I, I think they, well, did they, no, they didn't announce a new one last year either, did they? I thought they were like, we're taking a, a year off. Yeah, or something. Oh, yeah there's going to be a year mm-hmm. break between Assassin's Creed now. Uh, we forgot the Division is also Tom Clancy. We'll see an expansion. Oh, God, oh yeah. the Division Jeez. maybe while we're there? Maybe we'll see a Division expansion announced? Yeah, it could happen. I think, uh, well, the Division has uh, still maintained their player base fairly effectively. They're also taking a really harsh stance on cheaters, I think, in, in line with yeah, what Blizzard that. has been doing, too, so... They're uh, they're looking pretty good there. I think the division is going to be sticking around for a while. I kind of got tired of it already. I was actually kind of into it right off the release, but now I haven't played it in weeks. And I think there's you know a pretty obvious reason for that in that I've been playing Overwatch instead. But also, right. I just it didn't really capture my attention too much. So maybe an expansion might get me back into it. But yeah, you know, the division's doing pretty well. Okay, sweet. Uh, on to Sony then. That's the final big conference. Is Sony? They usually end up going last and. 
going out with a bang at least for the last few years. So probably going to follow suit again this year, right? What are you guys? Isn't are you guys predicting Nintendo for... the last one? Oh yeah, I guess they're, so. Yeah, they're going to be there. I they're was... just doing the treehouse thing. Yeah, right? it's not like uh... they're doing a Zelda thing expose. They're, they they were doing like the big Zelda reveal, and then they they keep saying that it's not just going to be Zelda at E3 as well, but. But it's not going to be the NX. Yeah, so. it's, yeah, it's not really going to be anything else. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead with the Sony. Uh, yeah, sure. So, Sony. What do we expect out of Sony this year? Somebody else go ahead and go with the uh, Sony predictions. I I would love to see Kingdom Hearts 3. I would love to see Kingdom Hearts 3 announced for this year, but that's not going to happen because we got Kingdom Hearts 2.8 Final Prologue it release Maximum Hype Overdrive Edition, whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, so there's that's uh, coming out around later this year, and then Final Fantasy 15 probably not till like maybe even 2018. Honestly, I'm pretty sure that's still oh, is that far out. Well, no, I'm sure you they'll know, show it's, it's, stuff. Though. They'll show it. Yeah, they'll absolutely show it there. But I, I think it's still at least another year, if not two. I thought it would be like a fall 2017 holiday release. That sounds yeah. I, I think that's probably right. Fall 2017, quarter four 2017. Uh, hmm. What else? Any other big ones? Well, well Ready we at Dawn there's... is making a new game. I don't know if it's going to be at the Sony conference or not, though. Who is? Ready at Dawn. They created The Order 1886. Oh, okay. And mm. they announced hey. a new game. Oh. Mm. <laughs> so their new game is being published by GameStop's publisher now. Oh, yeah. Game Trust. It is, yeah, yeah. And it's, called De- it's called Deformers, mm. and it is... They're proud to announce our brand new title, Deformers, a fast, frantic, third-person smash 'em up arena game where you consume, compete, and conquer your friends. Consume. So they went from the Order 1886, which is stuff. like, which was supposed to be a smash hit, to like this cartoony cube-like creatures that just run into each other. Yeah, it seems to be that worked for Beyblades. I'm trying to find anything about it, but they don't seem to want to promote it there's yet. a picture there's a couple pictures uh-huh. and that's it all right yeah that's all we got well that's unfortunate mm. not seeing too much else that they'd really get into i mean there is i guess they've got hitman it's with squeenix they've got episode three that just came around marrakesh oh. or no that was episode no that was episode three right yeah marrakesh uh, episode four, I guess they'll probably be revealing. Hitman's been—I've been enjoying Hitman, honestly. Like, I—I kind of feel weird talking about it like every month or so because yeah, I feel you like triple I'm just, A shill. Yeah, I'm just being a marketing machine for Square. Hitman's years. good. Watch Dogs is good. Uh, I'm excited for Ubisoft. I see all yeah. that developer money flowing out of your ears. <laughs> Cash money, baby. Uh, I don't know why you're not mentioning the the 4.5, the the re-release of the PS4 that's supposed to be. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. That's the, the same the, story as the Xbox redesign. There's yeah. the big one. So it's actually been confirmed to exist. The PlayStation 4 Neo. That's the in-house term for it. Uh, the okay. So this is a direct quote from Andrew House, the president and chief executive at Sony, who said they are working on a high-end PS4. It is intended to sit alongside and complement the standard PS4. They'll be selling both versions through the life cycle of the console. He also said all games will support the standard PS4, and we anticipate all or a very large majority of games will also support the high-end PS4. It's really weird to me. They've it's got... like an expansion pack, like the way you had for the N64. Yeah. They're just sort of doing like a improved version of the same deal he also they want to make it so you can have both yeah he also said that the high-end ps4 quote-unquote would be more expensive than the current ps4 at 350 bucks and that he's he's really not doing a good job of pitching us on this right now (laughs) he's saying not only will you have to buy something in addition to your ps4 but it's going to cost more than your ps4 cost initially so there's well, There's they're probably going to do some kind of thing with PSVR. Maybe, uh, maybe the extra box that you need for the PSVR will end up not being necessary if you buy the 4.5. Mm. That somehow there's something that's got to offset the cost of one for the other. Right. Otherwise, I don't see the sales pitch, really. Yeah. Obviously, at this point, yeah, again, we're speculating, but this is info that they've provided us. It, I mean... I think it's interesting that he would go on record with this info in particular, right? Because he's got to know that, A, it's going to circulate, and then, B, like, it's really not that encouraging as an idea. What would, what would an updated PS4 
have to provide for you to be excited about it. Because I feel like this announcement, you know, they're not stupid people. Mm. They they have to know that people are going to be like, well, I just bought my PS4 like two or three years ago, and now you want me to buy another one? Like, what? Surely they have something in mind to address those concerns, but I can't think of what it would be. But I'm interested to know what you guys would need. Yeah, I am too, actually. <laughs> it's, it's the high end PS4. We we keep talking about that 4K display, actual 4K gaming, which we're still fairly convinced is sort of a pipe dream at this point. It just doesn't really seem like a possibility. Even if that were a part of it, though, that wouldn't really be a selling point for me. I wouldn't really be inclined oh. to go with that, but obviously I'm not the target demo for that. I think the answer that is attainable is they can hit 1080p 60 frames per second on PS4 games that already exist with patches, mm -hmm. and they have said that they plan on doing exactly that. Um, even patching in new texture upgrades and things or, or other uh, methods of like higher anti-aliasing and things on games that already exist. So it will take a library you've already got and make it look and play better, hopefully. Mm. I am also really just not that confident about a high-end PS4 in general anyway, just based on my experience with my PS4. Like, if you guys will remember back when I was talking about the Final Fantasy XV demo that I tried out on my PS4, I had a really yeah. bad experience with that. I also had Firewatch on my PS4 that I played through entirely. That was a really laggy experience basically throughout. And I've I've just been sort of not pleased with the performance of the base PS4. So it's not it's not garnering any confidence from me there and it's really not getting me excited about buying a higher end one that may not perform as well as I'd like but it to either. To me it seems very implausible that at, you know, 500 bucks they could support 4K and 60 FPS and also, you know, the VR headset. Now, there's probably, like, over well, or overlapping uh, competencies there. Like, if you can support the 4K, you probably have the hardware capable of supporting the, the VR as well, depending on what it runs with. But at 500 bucks, that's, like, way cheaper than you would get a PC that does it. To to the point where I'm like they wouldn't be selling at a loss. It would be like a catastrophic loss. Like yeah, can you guys do you guys have hardware capable of running 4K on your PC? No, I don't think. Yeah, so. I, I don't well, think. If I ran it, it would be at about 24 frames per second at best. Yeah. Do we know? Yeah. What, I what, like, no, a, I mean like smooth 60. There's no way. What's like the minimum spec for that? Do we know? It's just even as far as like maybe a graphics card is concerned. I'd need more than the 980 Ti that I've got, and that's, that's like, one of the better ones that are out there. Mm -hmm. I think I've got, like, a 970, so, yeah, I don't think any of us could do it. Hmm. It seems, it just seems like there must be something else that they've got going on that they're going to come out with, and maybe they think people are excited about it, and they're not actually excited about it, and we'll be, like, shrugging our shoulders, but, I don't know, for me, it just seems like I've not seen anybody being like, this is good news. Yeah, So no, like hardly anyone. <laughs> it's, I, and again, it is very speculative at the moment, but this is the, this is the information they've chosen to share, and this is not exciting. So that's just like that, what we have to work from here is sort of discouraging on us, almost at this point. I got to point out, too, that chat said about 100 times the 4K is apparently just for Blu-ray movies, not necessarily intended for games. Yeah, okay. Which, again, if they're mentioning it without that context right with it, oh, yeah. do that, please. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so, the, the Neo. We'll, we'll see more. I, I really hope we'll see more about that. Although it has, it has been rumored as well that they won't be showing that at E3. So that's also discouraging. Yay. Yay. No, <laughs> Maybe... At Sony's conference, as long as they're making outlandish predictions, sure. the next uh, the next game from From Software. I was gonna say Bloodborne Two or could something. Be, could yeah, be. why not? That'd be great. They said, they said they're not making a Souls game next, so this makes sense. Mm -hmm. I I the time is right for it doesn't have to be in the Sony conference. Could be in PC, but for No Man's Sky to actually put a controller in somebody's hands on stage God, and have them yeah. walk around for like 10 or 15 minutes mm. and do stuff. Let it like be I, playable, not be nice. just be marketing bullshit. That would be... Yeah. That, that, those videos game. are out there. There's many, many minutes of being played live. 
Isn't you guys haven't always... seen those? I mean, they, they no. have the gameplay videos. No, I've seen the gameplay videos, but I've, I think like the actual E3, here's the finished product, or at least as close to it as we're going to get before we actually right. start to release it, right? It's. I guess so. I think, I think there's a possibility and opening for that to happen. I am. I want to get back to it real quick because I don't know if I'm the only one. I'm really excited for Kingdom Hearts 3. Like, even back. <laughs> I remember back in like 2014, the initial announcement for that. That, that was. That got me back to 13 year old. Holy fuck, I'm so excited about a game mode, right? That, that, that did it for me, man. I, I'm ready for a. Uh, an actual full-fledged new Kingdom Hearts game instead of a fucking remake or a mobile game or a fucking port or just like oh, man. 2 I got a port of a mobile eight, game for final protrusion that I, first of all I need less of those protrusion it's not called 6.8 something it's called final 2.8 2.8 mix hearts it's called kingdom hearts hd 2.8 final chapter prologue and you say okay. that like it's better <laughs> okay okay i lost you all hold on also ready for kingdom hearts 3 okay great up oh, everybody's gone yeah you, you, i i Hello. heard you say you're also excited for kingdom hearts 3 so i'm gonna take that all right i'm gonna run with it <laughs> uh uh, that's Sony, I think, as well, right? Oh, yeah, Last Guardian. I'm sure that'll be no, there again. Oh, fuck! How did I even... Bear hates Last Guardian. I Don't bring so that up. You're gonna get pissed. I can't... <laughs> <laughs> so mad! Oh, so angry that it hasn't entered my life yet, actually. That's the... That's the fucking... Flip. Where's the Shadow of the Colossus reboot, remake? Where is... Complete redo. Where is my Shadow of the Colossus IV drip? Really? With the extra 10 uh, Colossi that they planned on adding that they never they got around to. They were going to have like 50 the of them in the game initially, man. It was it was wild. They had, you know, I, I was obsessed with the idea of there being a 17th Colossus, too, for a long time. They, they were... You can find it. You just got to glitch out of the world. Yeah, dude. You just got to get the cape. You got to get the, uh, the, the superstar. You got to get it invincibility. You can go on top of the temple and get those fruits down, mm -hmm. right? And they, they permanently the reduced your health. If you got them, yeah, it was like it was the best, the best worst secret of all time, and it took like a hell of a lot of effort to get up there too, and then you get it there, and it's like, hey, here's yeah. this, here's this fruit that permanently reduces your HP. Congratulations, you're an asshole. Also, I have one thing that I want to see more than anything. I don't know what category it would belong under, but Red Dead Redemption on PC, for the love of God, Ooh, please make it. I would love that. Or two, RDR2. I'll take two. Yeah, yeah, I'll take RDR two on the PC at the same fucking time. That'd be pretty oh, awesome. God, we're going to see that. Bucks. What was the last thing Rockstar did? I mean, GTA 5? Uh, yes, but, like, <laughs> what have they been doing since then? Uh, GTA 5. like, we're going to see... I Apparently, we're going to see RDR 2 at E3. Well, That is, like, the rumors going around mm. is that Red Dead Redemption 2 is going to be at E3. And I sincerely hope so. I'd be I perfectly okay with that, yeah. Loved Red Dead Redemption. Best series or best I'm with game. you. I think Red Dead Redemption destroys GTA and like man okay number one I post like for Red Dead Redemption 2 website I've never heard of <laughs> website I've never heard of website I've never heard of what, like IGN? 30 websites no these are <laughs> like I don't here's I'm always skeptical of just before E3 cuz Anybody can Photoshop anything and then be like, oh, I found this on a unencrypted server somewhere. It's mm. Red Dead Redemption 2, you know. So I'm just wary about it right now. Yeah, I mean, I if it's not there, I'm not going to be upset because, I mean, we don't have, obviously, any official announcements. But, man, I hope it is because I want Red Dead Redemption 2. It feels like the trajectory would put us in the right position that this is when it should happen or right around here. Mm. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Well, I'm, let's I'm go ahead and predict it then. Red Dead Redemption 2, Sony. This Everybody year. loves it. Do it. It'd be a great idea. It would sell <laughs> yeah, I mean, 10 million GTA copies. GTA 5 has had, had its time. You know, like, it's still a great game. People still play it. They did just You'll announce... see some GTA 5 experience, uh, expansions. Well, they did just announce, like, a pretty massive uh, expansion to GTA Online, didn't they? It's something like you can no run idea. your own massive crime conglomerate or something like that. Ah. You can buy all kinds of buildings now and... Just this I need square footage to bike on. That's all you I care do. about. Yeah, Give exactly. me another island. <laughs> Horseback it's, riding throughout the West. Do you it. know, it's old enough to be plausible that they would come out with a Grand Theft Auto 6 or something like that, but 
maybe a little too early. I think it's too early for GTA. GTA Five came out in 2013. Years. You think you, but maybe they could start like teasing it a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, be like, hey, just so you know, in a year and a half there might be a new Grand Theft Auto or something. Yeah, why not? All right, there's Sony. That's good stuff. That's the that's the whole of our E3 2016 predictions. If you missed any part of that, you can catch the VOD on YouTube or listen on iTunes or something. And uh, we're going to move into, let's talk about, can we talk about Mirror's Edge Catalyst? You want to do that for a little yeah. bit? Yeah, you'd good. like. Love that. Sure. Can you tell me about it again, Nick? I know you had a, a lukewarm experience. Do give me the well, rundown anyway. I haven't played the final version of it, so that should be certainly noted. I played the beta. Mm-hmm. And I had some, like you said, some lukewarm reactions to it. I felt there was a bit too much forced combat. And in an effort to make the game more open world, which it is for the most part, uh, they ended up having to fill it up with tons and tons of little mini games that don't really make it feel like a cohesive experience, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Uh, The game still looks generally quite pretty. Uh, The aesthetic is still pretty much there. Uh, But the, the way they had to kind of bend what was pretty nicely done linear uh, level design. I found that they kind of really undid the general point of the game, uh, which was really fast thinking adaptation to what was coming at you. And they also added like skill trees. So you don't have all your moves right away. You got to unlock them as you go. Oh, I don't like that at all. Forgettable characters and such. But I'm very curious to hear how this contrasts with Mathis's final opinions of the game now that it's out. Hmm, As am I. I am... I am five hours into the game about, I think, so far. Um, I See, I generally agree with you, Nick, in that I, I, I so far I'm liking the game. I'm not loving the game, but I'm enjoying my time with it. I don't like the open world. I feel like it's forced. It doesn't feel needed it or add natural. Anything, right? It doesn't just add sort of like, anything. So they can say it's open world. Yeah, basically. like <laughs> It's just filled with a bunch of nonsense things to collect, and I, there's a lot of things to just collect in the world. You are... Uh, looking for little bot like security boxes in the world to grab chips out of, and you're looking for little glowing yellow orbs in the sky to grab, and computer chips to rip out of different looking boxes. The open world just feels pointless. There's some cool things about it, like you can come across people that are like, "Hey, runner, I need somebody to run this for me," and it's like a timed thing. I like that. That adds to it because you do have to do that thinking on your feet, kind of like, "All right, is this the best path?" Um, the the actual like mechanics of the game, the the platforming or whatever you call it i can't think of the word free um, running free running yeah feels good I, I like it the the other thing i have a weird complaint about i guess it's not weird but the combat in the game yeah. i don't know why they felt the need to make it something necessary cuz yeah. mirror's edge 1 was all about avoiding combat combat was shitty you didn't want to fight you just kind of ran at worst you would like maybe disarm a guard and then run but this game, they specific you, specifically in main missions, lock you in rooms and be like, the elevator's coming, you gotta fight off these guys until the elevator gets there. And now there's like wave after wave of guys that you have to fight. And it just doesn't, it's not Mirror's Edge. It just feels like you're trying to play some weird first person brawler. And in that, Dying Light, in my opinion, does that way better. Yeah. Um, the combat didn't feel like it had much impact. And for the most part, when you hit people, the majority of the time you're trying to knock them in a certain direction to get them to fly yeah. off of stuff which yep. is like so why are we doing this just don't fight them then but they don't give yep. you that option um and then there's the other thing the, the other complaint i have about the open world outside of the fact that it feels unnecessary is that the world itself is interesting in that it's this corporation owned world everything is neat and tidy and clean and like perfect and pitch white but if you put that kind of idea in an open world, everything gets monotonous looking and boring looking very quickly because it's overly clean. It's it's overly pretty. Uh, every, you're just it's unnecessary. It just you get bored looking at the same thing over and over again. Where in like the open world of Dying Light is grungy and there's a lot of zombies around and it's more fun to traverse uh, and it suits the open world better. So I just wish they had taken Mirror's Edge one and just made take that idea of linear level design and just made a second one with it. Yeah, I agree. It, they, for so much as they, they had such a good idea with making an open world, it just the execution kind of just makes it fall apart. You only end up going through the same bunch of tracks, in my experience, a bunch yeah. of times, which defeats the whole point anyway. So I'd be much happier having a bunch of specifically designed linear levels that actually cater to your strengths and have the ability to, uh, to follow an arc of getting easier to more difficult 
in this case, they can't really design a difficulty level. It's just wherever you happen to be at the time. I will say that the main story missions that lock you in these areas that are levels built for uh, linear progression are great. Like, they're fun to traverse. They're built in, in a way that, you know, they, they have your platforming or free running in mind. Uh, when you're taken out of that open world, it gets better. But when you're back in that open world, it's not it's not something I'm en- I, I enjoy greatly. I'm still enjoying the game, but I'm not loving it. It felt tedious to me in two hours, and that's a bad sign because the game felt yeah. like there was a lot more than that. Uh, I think Dying Light is better, in my opinion. That's I had a, more fun with that. That's Dying a weird com- comparison, in my opinion. I feel like... Well, maybe it's because it sounds like they've really changed the formula in so many different ways here in Catalyst that it almost doesn't feel like it's even comparable to the first game anymore so much. It's but, not. Mirror's Edge is not yeah. comparable to Mirror's Edge to Catalyst. It's a reboot of the story and everything. Mm-hmm. They throw away the entire first game. The first game is non, non-existent. Mm-hmm. So I was also wondering, I apologize too, by the way, sorry for the viewers. We're, I, I'm watching a storm roll in over my house right now, so that's... <laughs> That's about why we're uh, dropping all kinds of frames here, so apologize for that. Uh, I, I'm curious, I wonder if because it's an open world and with just like the style of gameplay that Mirror's Edge is, or at least was in the first game, I feel like if you combine an open world with that, you get almost like a Spider-Man on the GameCube sort of feel in that you're able to run around and free run and grab on everything and just explore this big open city, but it doesn't really feel like that, I guess. No, because at least with the Spider-Man thing, you have the superhero thing going where you have the civilians on the ground and they react to you and you kind of like can get weird side missions and stuff like that. Where mm. this is such a sterile, monotonous looking environment. It's There's designed not... around primitives. It's all boxes and rectangles. Yes. Mm. It's all just, you're, you don't ever go on the street level. It's all, the whole open world is on the rooftops. Because like that the street level op- still kills you, right? Yeah, you fall, I mean, you can't go down. You fall, you die. Mm. Um it's just a monotonous, like, I think that's the best way I can describe it, monotonous and sterile. There's no life in that world. It's not fun. You don't feel like you're having an impact. Where in Spider-Man, for instance, there are people, there's cars, there's things happening. Yeah. There's, nothing, there's nothing happening in Catalyst in, in the world. And just think about the idea of it being a sterile environment and then all of it being open, where everywhere you go, you're sort of seeing the same thing. There's nothing to give you a landmark perspective. So, like, imagine you were walking streets in New York City, and you go through five of them, they all look identical, and then you get to Times Square. Oh, and like, yeah. oh, shit. <laughs> I know where I am now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then you're going back into the streets again, and you don't know where you are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, that's the problem with it being sterile. It's a cool aesthetic, but in that context, it doesn't necessarily bolster the gameplay. Yeah, I, I, I agree. It, it, the sterile world works in a linear, story-focused game. When you throw that person out into that world... You have to make it interesting. And if you don't, it just is as boring as it looks. I am so surprised. Like, this world kind of sucks, man. (laughs) I'm so surprised to hear that they made combat such a focal point, too. That just seems so backwards. It's an unfortunate choice they made. Yeah. Hmm. I don't have a clue why they would do that. They must simply not understand what makes the game good, if that was their focus. Man, I feel weird asking this question. It was the same developing the, uh, it was the same developer, right, that made Catalyst, or was it a different one? This is Dice that made Catalyst. I don't know. Did Dice make the first one? I couldn't tell you, but let's find out live on the internet right now. But it's gorgeous. It uses the Frostbite engine. I mean, the game is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, the original was made by Dice. Yeah. Okay. So that's just straight I think up they got, shocking. <laughs> they got told to do that. I can't imagine they wanted to do that. That's what I feel that. like. Mm. I feel like maybe he was like, open worlds are the thing. Like, do open world, but it's just... Wait, the original Mirror's Edge didn't have combat, so here's what I think we need. Oh, this is... It like, did. Oh, it's, it's no, the it did. Easy, I, I know the it original... did, but like, it wasn't... You, you didn't focus on the combat at all. It was like not what you were trying to... That was not why you played Mirror's Edge. was not for the combat, right? Or yeah, uh, yeah, it no, was yeah, to definitely. avoid the combat. So yeah. like, I, I it just seems like it was just the easiest boardroom decision of all time. It was like, okay, well, this is here's a new IP that we had. It was fairly successful, but I think I see the problem here. You see, li- kids these days they like violence, and you don't have any violence in this game. It's all about running around. That doesn't make any sense. Throw some punching in there. Let's get some kids beating on soldiers. I'll sell copies. That's Such my boardroom guy voice. It's a shame because again. People wanted more Mirror's Edge because they enjoyed the first Mirror's Edge. Yeah. Why change it so drastically? It sucks. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's I, not as simple, but it does raise the question in in my head at least of like, well, if you're gonna make it bad, why'd you why'd you make it? Like, <laughs> yeah, I know it's that weird. it's not easy to just be like, just make it good. But <laughs> like, it's it sucks that this was like a rumor for like three years, and then it got confirmed, and people were stoked. They were like, oh shit, Mirror's Edge two, yeah. and then. When it came out, people now, I think, it just kind of, like, came out with a, a whimper, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, I it well, didn't that even realize that it was dropping until, yeah, pe- like, was no it was marketing. on the docket. Yeah, there was, there was no like, marketing little at all. to no marketing, yeah. Which probably Oh, it sounds it. like they know it's not that great, and they, they didn't want to overplay it. It is really just so weird now. It, just like Ryan said, they it's the kind of thing where... People enjoyed it, you know, like, it was kind of a diamond in the rough. It didn't sell incredibly well, but I think critically it was pretty well received. I think a lot of people consider it one of their favorite, just sort of foregone weird games that came and went, right? But to make a second one, I think you got to commit pretty heavily to that, at least. And not only try to market it, try to sell it, but commit to the source material, too, but... There's just a lot of really interesting decisions here. It just throws me off, too, that the world is so filled with just random fucking collectibles. The world is broken up into zones. It's a big open world, but you go from zone to zone. Every time you go into a a new zone, it shows a list of all the fucking things you need to collect to get 100% in that zone. I'm like, that is not why I want to play this game. Yeah, no. Yeah. Don't Assassin's Creed it. Or anything. It's just collecting all the stuff just gives you experience to unlock more things. In your in your trees, in your There's, talent trees, uh, they had to legitimize that, why that space existed, so they had to put stuff in it. Is kind of why I why think they did that. Is it okay in Crackdown One though? Crackdown One is a a different game from a way different era. Crackdown that, One came out today the same way. I think people would be shitting on it for being like it's a fucking collect a fest. It's, all it's right. boring. I don't know about that. I don't think I do. I don't think Crackdown and this are even necessarily comparable. I feel like Crackdown was an entirely different question. sort of game. I th- I think it was uh, I think it was like well, this is this is a sequel to a a linear runner, right? So right. I think like inherently we have to expect that it's going to retain most of the elements of that, which I mean like to be fair it did. It is more or less the same sort of well, game, right? I mean, it, yeah, I mean, at the same time, too, with uh, Crackdown, you can always say the moment-to-moment gameplay of Crackdown was way more interesting than moment-to-moment gameplay of open-world Mirror's Edge. Because you can just d- d- pull a Hulk and just start wreaking havoc on the world for no good reason. Because you're a super soldier who can pick up cars yeah. and throw them. Mm. You can't do that in Mirror's Edge. You're just going from point A to point B from next mission to next mission. Yeah, like, there's not really a lot to do as just faith in Mirror's Edge. But as a character in Crackdown, like Matt is saying, you have, like, shit that you can actually perform and, yeah. you know, ways to interact with the world. But it's closer just... to the ideal of a sandbox game, whereas mm-hmm. this is more just, like, an open-world game that isn't necessarily a sandbox because all you do is run through it. Mm. And they use the, the pickups in Crackdown to sort of help you uh, explore areas you never would have thought to look for in the first place. Whereas in Mirror's Edge, you kind of have to go out of your way not to see all the areas there are. Hmm. How can they really hide things in that? It's pretty open. Like you yeah, just nothing see it that all. they've they've put in uh, Mirror's Edge is hidden, and when you get close, it marks it right on your HUD. It's like, oh, there's a collectible over here. Oh, it's like, the oh, foregone okay. conclusion yeah. that there's collectibles within your reach all the time. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I mean, we gotta stop Ryan from memeing up chat. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I I've, <laughs> so you guys would probably still I don't know Nick it doesn't really sound like you enjoyed it too much you wouldn't well okay recommend or not recommend I think let's let's get it down to brass tacks here Me? I almost uh, don't even know because like the fact that it's a different game from Mirror's Edge One means you can't even say well if you liked Mirror's Edge One you're just sort of going in blind yeah uh, I didn't think that the quality was recommendable personally but I I wouldn't bash people that like it yeah. All right. Memphis. I would recommend it on a sale. Wait Fair for enough. it to go on sale. Then I'd say if it's like thirty bucks, I think it's worth thirty. I think it's it's uh it's fun, but who knows? Again, it's an individual taste thing, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's head over to uh, Dead by Daylight real quick. 
Yeah. Yeah. I like this game. Ryan, you want to tell me about Dead by Daylight? Ryan, for all the people who haven't played, uh, could you <laughs> yeah, explain well, how would us you what Dead by, Dead by Daylight, Daylight is? <laughs> I've been waiting for this moment my whole life. <laughs> Dead by Daylight is an asymmetrical multiplayer game for five people where one of them plays as a killer, four of them play as survivors in a self-contained arena. The goal of these survivors is to fix five generators, which they do by spending time at them and succeeding in quick time events, and then opening the door to escape. The killer gets some audio prompts when people mess up and whenever they complete certain objectives and tries to hunt them down, slashes them, puts them on a meat hook, and then you know defends them while other people try to rescue them. That's basically it. The killer wins if they kill one or more or- people, and the survivors win if one or more of them escape basically or it's kind of like smart survivor you leave the person on the hook and continue your day <laughs> yes or if you're if you're dan giesling you uh just shadow other survivors and stand right behind them and then sprint and give away everybody's position and uh <laughs> jesus christ it's a great game i I really am enjoying Dead by Daylight. I'm excited for it to come out for the other killers and stuff. It is giving me the itch to play more Damned, though, and make... I just wish Damned wasn't Damned wasn't so fucking broken all the time. Mm-hmm. Well, that same complaint kind of goes to the beta in this, too. It's pretty broken as well. It works better than Damned, though, for yeah, the most does. part. For sure, it does. <laughs> this is playable it's really... when you get together. It's fun. really fun. It needs more, uh, and apparently that's coming when it like actually releases. But I've played like four or five hours... And it's actually, like, holding my interest, which is pretty nice. And there's a surprising amount of, uh, like, nuance to learn, even though you only have, like, two different ways you can interact with things. You know, you you kind of, you get these exciting moments where basically you're just crouching behind stuff, trying to, like, kite the killer around. Like, make sure that you break line of sight with him, which is really cool. But, uh, yeah, it's it's good stuff Mm -hmm. for the most part. I'm looking forward to more killers. And... Hopefully, a robust online community of people that will actually work together. But in general, I'm just like, I'm a sucker for asymmetrical stuff. So, I, I'm I'm glad that there's more of it because it's it's easy to play and it's nice on the NLSS as well to have that dynamic where like one against four, or, you know, however many they can do. How? Or if you're just Dan, if you're two against three, if you're Dan, yeah, right, <laughs> working for the killer. <laughs> How balanced does it feel? Because I kind of feel like a lot of uh, the killers have gotten to be almost unbeatably good. Does that feel the same to you guys? I've heard that. Like, I've heard that once the killer... Like, the killer gets better faster than the survivors get better, Mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, But for the most part, it's self-balanced with who you play with. Like, if somebody... You, when we were playing today, like, Mathis is more experienced as the killer, and he was tearing it up. Like, we're literally like, does he know where we are at all times? Like, are we just showing up on his map? <laughs> but then, you know, when when somebody who's less experienced plays as the killer, it seems a little bit more like the survivors almost have too much of an advantage. Like, you, we've had that experience where you've been the killer, and you're like, well, there's four of them. And they only need one person to fix all five generators. So, like, how is this even fair for me? But... It, it's definitely, uh, like, it, it tends to balance itself, I think. Like, it, if you're a really good killer and the rest of your group sucks, you should let them be the killer. You <laughs> yeah. Should, yeah. You should just be a survivor for a while instead. By the same token, I never was frustrated by it either. Even when I was getting beaten as a survivor, I didn't feel like I had no control over it. I was just in a bad situation a few times. I still felt like it was my fault when I lost, ultimately. So the, the game feels fair, even if you die a lot. Yeah. It's a, a more of- uh, horror version of Evolve, basically. Like, Evolve was scary at times, but they kind of compromised that when you have, like, the fight at the end with the monster, and yeah. you just everybody's just like, duh, 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 you know, unloading on it. Yeah. Even though I still think that Evolve is conceptually really cool. Um, but this is, like, a little smaller and a, a little more tightly focused on the horror elements, which makes it, I think, more more of a fun experience. Right on. It's also just fun to play with friends since we all know each other and we're all just having this little dynamic moment of people clustering together, people running away scared. Everybody's got something going on. Just look on. for Dan and you'll find everybody else. And that's the other thing is there's betrayals sometimes. There's moments of banter that get really fun. And, you know, that by itself is sort of like a, a part of the experience. And it's a lot of fun just to have those kind of moments with your friends. 
There's a lot of little nuances to the maps that you still slowly start to learn too. That even though the game is relatively simple, what makes it more comp more interesting, and complicated? Like the crows around the map can give away your position just by them flying off. Oh, that's cool. Um, one thing I noticed today is the killer. Now I'm not sure if it was just happenstance and I got lucky, but I was looking at the gen generators, and when a generator was being fixed in the distance, I could see lights on like like dimly flickering, flickering. on the generator. Yeah, that is a thing. Mm -hmm. I so I was too. like, oh, okay, that generator is being fucked with. Even if you didn't fuck it up, if I catch it with my eye, it's like, okay, I'm gonna head that way. Uh, seeing a survivor think they're being sneaky, and then if, like cutting them off around the path, like there's just a lot of fun little things you can do in the game. When they think they're getting through a window, you grab their leg and rip them out. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. Man, it's it's so off-putting to see like kids being hung on meat hooks, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, it they're is. teenagers, all right. Yeah, I guess, but still, it's like, oh it's man, oh, sure. it's very disturbing. And you put uh, a bear trap underneath them, and yeah, God. well, I mean, like that it's isn't not... that isn't even that bad. I can I can I can deal with a bear trap, but just like to watch this. No, you can't watch this Jason <laughs> Voorhees guy. Okay, <laughs> no, I I probably couldn't deal with a bear trap. You're right. <laughs> so, yeah, just the whole sequence is very very off putting for me. Uh, it does it, look the fun, problem though. right now is that we have like an older version of the game for beta, and it's like it's pretty busted like it's very unstable mm. is known bugs that can cause crashes which effectively crashes five people's games simultaneously mm. if one person gets kicked out yeah but apparently it's an outdated version and the one that they're actually working on is is much further along so i'd be curious i'm curious to know what the differences between the three killers are going to be like what is going to set them apart and make one killer better in a particular situation than another I would Movement love to style. see like a fucking super fast killer man. Like you can't maybe you I want a ghost. Oh, I, I thought there was too. a ghost. I don't know why yeah, I thought this, I thought but I thought was... I saw a picture of a ghost. I thought there was one that's invisible. Yeah. Oh, or that, one that that's... can go invisible. Something like that. That's awesome. Yeah. Because right now, like the Jason Voorhees guys, like he's faster than the than the teenagers, but not by much. He's just lumbering and plotting and He's just sort of a, he, a stereotypical serial killer type yeah. dude. Like an eighties or seventies slasher. Like yeah. villain. Yeah. So and who's well, constantly obsessed with the hygiene of his own sword. Yeah, he's gotta wipe <laughs> he's the gotta blood off his sword after you like, it's obviously to give somebody a chance to get a second chance at running away. Yeah. Like yeah. that's why they put that in, it's for balancing reasons. But when you're the killer, he stops after he slashes someone to wipe the blood this, off and you're like, Why are you doing that? Sleeve of his shirt, right man. Like it can't be <laughs> yeah. that clean anymore. He keeps wiping it off yeah. in the same area. <laughs> Shit's gonna get infected. Oh shit! What if there was one like the thing where you could disguise yourself as a survivor? Oh, I love that idea. Yeah, that would be great. That would be awesome. I I'm not entirely sure. I like the idea. It, this is a minor uh, minor nitpick, mm. but uh, the the survivors are all in third person. I get that they kind of need that advantage, but I feel yeah. like it takes away a little bit from the horror element and gives you a little bit too yeah. much. I, maybe like give them a wider FOV or something because the killer's FOV is really really tiny and you can't change it yeah um but i, I don't know if i because i i take that from damned where everything is in first person and damned i really like that idea of if first person because it can add more tension to the game but on the flip side i understand for balancing purposes it's important to give them an awareness that the killer doesn't necessarily have mm. it didn't bother me personally i'm fine with it i said it's a nitpick but all right. I really like those elements, though, where, like, you're crouching behind a box and you can, like, watch the killer go by because of the over-the-shoulder camera so that you know oh, when yeah. it's, like, okay to poke out. But uh, I, I can understand it would be scarier to actually, like, be behind the box and just have to look at the box and wait for, like, your heartbeat <laughs> to calm down or something like yeah. that. Or, like, be in the closet and only be able to see, like, like a, a little slit. Crack. Yeah. The, yeah. That'd be fun. Uh, but a, a third person gives you the advantage of like, oh, the killer's coming because I blew up uh, my machine. Hang on, there's Dan running. He'll be seen. Okay, yep, there goes uh, Dan. All right, I get to continue. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys find the game legit super, like, scary? Or is... It's tense for me. It's not tense. scary, but it's like when I'm a survivor, it's typically pretty tense. I'm curious I don't think to know I've what, ever like, the consensus is about that. I I'm... really enjoy being the killer, though. It's yeah, hard it's to it's hard to think of a multiplayer game as being actually, you know, like horror game scary, isn't it? Just because you're there with other people. It's like right. I don't know, it's like going to see a scary movie in theaters. Like it's a lot less it's a lot less intimidating the, when you're experiencing it as a group, I think. 
if the person playing the killer stays pretty quiet and doesn't really announce where he is and doesn't really talk much, I think that can add a little bit of horror because then you'll just appear without really being like part of the banter. So it can catch you guys off guard mid banter, just scare the crap out of you. Oh, but if he talks it, like this, this exactly, like it might this. be fun <laughs> if there was like a cool down move you could do that would like shock someone. Like if you it had like a minor AOE. And if you're standing near them and they don't see you, you could scare them, and that would give you like a second to sneak up yeah, on them better. Be nice. mm-hmm. All right, maybe that's the... part of one of the monster designs. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm excited to see the three the three new monster designs in a couple days. Me too. All right. It's a I small it's... game too, but like I'm kind of over the quick time events for everything. Like, oh yeah, yeah, some other kind of quick time events would be good. Like. Not just the like wheel that spins around and you got to stop it in the right spot. Well, you get to mash space bar. When do you oh, get yeah, to? Oh, sucks. when you're yeah, that when one's the worst to actually. When you're trying to survive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that <laughs> you turned into. But yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dead by Daylight. It's coming out June fourteenth, so not quite available yet. A few days away. It's uh, currently on pre-purchase sale for seventeen ninety nine. It's ten percent off. You can normally get it for twenty bucks. And uh, let's see here. I think you know. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Yeah, let's talk about Gone Home right now. Let's do it. Let's do it. So the uh, PlayStation Plus free games for this month, if you are a subscriber and you're curious, are uh, NBA 2K16, which I played and uh, immediately remembered why I stopped because I get way too mad at that game. Uh, but Gone Home was the other one, and uh, Wife Toffee and I actually picked it up and played through it. So I had played Gone Home back when it was first released, and there was a ton of buzz for this game, like just huge amounts of buzz. Everyone was playing Gone Home. Everyone was talking about, oh, you gotta, you gotta play Gone Home. It's hugely important like a great story incredible characters all this stuff and i i played through it i it took about like an hour and a half or two hours to play through the whole thing the first time i played it and that was a little underwhelming and i also just sort of didn't really connect with it and i if you've played the game i think that there's you know it's not a game for me as a person particularly you know like it, it does not reflect my lifestyle so it, it didn't really hit me but I can see easily how it can impact quite a few people pretty strongly I think uh, upon the second playthrough though I actually appreciated it a lot more uh, it was uh, it was a lot easier to also not be playing and to watch somebody else play it as well because then I was just like almost 100% focused on the story on what was actually going on we can probably spoil it now, right? I think it's been like three years. We can probably talk about Don- Gone Home pretty definitively. I hope so, yeah. So the – well, hold on. Let me put my spoiler banners up then. Let's be let's be proper about it. Spoiler warning. All right. If you've not played Gone Home yet, we'll, we'll talk about it now, I guess. Uh, so the, the story is you come home. You arrive after a year-long trip to Europe to uh, find out that your family is gone and uh well they're not gone they they went on a little trip and your sister has uh taken off with her lesbian romantic lover and they did a great job i think of telling this whole story i loved the narrative i loved the voice acting and the actual game though I I still while I I wholeheartedly appreciate it. I think it's I, as I mentioned, the story is great. I just I was a little still just kind of disappointed by the by the complete experience because I think it's still I still think it's over too quick. And while that's such a basic complaint, it's just I I can't get away from it. You know, it's the the. It's it's probably the biggest argument made against Gone Home is that it's got that twenty dollar price tag for two hours basically of gameplay time. It's also not replayable hardly at all. In like, I, well, okay, I played it twice, but that was really only to get the achievement <laughs> that you can beat it sixty seconds in. But uh, the uh, yeah, I, I don't know. So you guys all played Gone Home then, right? I think the all, all yep. four of us did. Yep, I loved it. Yeah, so go ahead and go go ahead and take me through your experience with it then. 
Well, my experience was, and you kind of cut right to the chase of just kind of saying the ending, but the whole game yeah. is essentially framing what happened and why no one's at your house. Yeah. And the whole premise is that you're going and contextually discovering all the items in the house. There's a lot of exposition. There's voiceover work explaining why this item has significance or, you know, basically doing all the clue uncovering yourself as you walk through all the rooms in the house. And it's a pretty big house. It takes you a few minutes to understand what's going on. In addition to being a big house, it's also got some secret rooms and there's like a whole other area that you go around and come out another side and loops back around kind of a creative and weird way. And since you don't understand what you're even doing in the game, like you don't understand what the point of the game is going to be, the whole thing feels sort of like this dynamic, weird story that you just, it's sort of like how I felt with Firewatch, right? Mm -hmm. Like you just don't know what is this meant to be by the end? What is the, the point of this story going to be? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have like a telegraphing moment early on where it's like, oh, well, I see because of this, I'm going to put the points together and there's the ending. I spoiled it for myself. I never got that feeling. Um, it all came together for me as I went and it was very uh, sweetly done with a lot of uh, character, with a lot of uh, warmth and in a very humanizing way, and in a way that I hadn't really seen a lot of narrative-driven games really portrayed. And I felt it was very touching. I thought the story was put together well, and the uh, the graphics were beautiful. Mm. The whole experience for me was just, like, really nicely polished. Um, so I really didn't mind the $20 price tag, and I also played through it twice myself, too. Mm. I, I On that same note, I do want to agree with you and say that I think the... Uh, I think the the way that they presented it was pretty damn good because, well, I thought it was funny too because uh, when Wife Dive was playing it, she actually was so convinced that it was a horror game for like the first 25 minutes because, you yeah. know, it's like it's all dark and you have no idea what's going on. Yeah. It's, I think that's probably pretty deliberate too. They did it on purpose. Yeah. yeah. That, that is what makes the game actually kind of hit, I think, because yeah. you spend like 80% of the experience waiting for like the other shoe to drop and the ghost of like the, your grandfather to come and yeah, kidnap yeah. you or something like that. <laughs> mm. And by the time you figure out that that's not actually what's happening, you've gone through the stuff that if they put it on the back of the box, you never would have picked up the game to begin with for yeah. most people. And you, ca you care about the characters and as a result, you know, the ending has some heft, I think, if you go into it with the kind of it, with goodwill, I guess, mm. or you go into it in good faith, I guess. So, yeah, I, I liked it a lot as well, and if it had been built... Here's the thing, is that I think for most of us, at least Nick and I, we played through Gone Home when everybody thought it was a horror game. Mm. Uh, and so, too, like, it's around yeah, the same time. Finishing it for the first time, and then being like, oh, so this is, like, not what this game is about at all. We weren't coming in the way that other people are coming in later, like, Knowing you know it's a walking it's simulator, knowing it's about, like, you know, young gay love, basically. So, yeah, no, I actually think it was really good uh, at the time. I haven't played it through since. I've kind of, like, had that experience. But, there, you sure, there's something to be said about the fact that it's 20 bucks for two hours. Is another issue in games, yeah. you know. I mean, I'm paying 20 bucks for, like, one-hour VR experiences as well yeah, right now. And, like, so. I, I didn't want to start, like, making those comparisons of what's worth 20 bucks and all that. I, I still just... I, I still can't not say it, though. I, I, I would feel disingenuous because I actually kind of feel like this is one of the very, very few instances where I personally kind of felt like, okay, yeah, that was... That was maybe a little too short. I, I, I would have liked for this to go on a little bit longer. Mathis? No, I sit with Ryan and Nick, I think, because I played at the same time as they did, where we didn't know anything about the game. We didn't know if it was going to be a horror game or not, um, that it just hit harder for me. And it, it hits me. I think that game, you know, I'm, I'm a little biased. It hits me particularly hard just because my brother is gay and, and know a lot of the stuff that we went through as kids and what he had to go through. So kind of living that, I mean, not that that story is the same, but a lot of the stuff that that story tells. Right. Uh maybe a little bit more biased on that but um it's I very really personal it. yeah like yeah. the way that they depict it it's very intimate and it's very careful about the word and the language that they use in this situation and i really i felt for her so much in that the yeah, story I was do. just presented so well yeah yeah so uh, the quality i couldn't have asked for much more sure maybe it could have been longer but honestly i felt like it was just about the right length to keep my attention with a nice arc that felt like it was starting to a middle and then resolving you know that's and a there was a little point. bit of stuff to the side too yeah. So. No, that is that's a good point. I, I hadn't considered that, you know, like they, they do they wrap it up very nicely and it feels right when it ends. But it's it, I, I don't know. I think it maybe the more I think about it, it, it is just sort of a superficial argument for me to say, like, well, I mean, twenty dollars and but 
Yeah, there's there's not a lot of meat and potatoes to that discussion, I guess. But yeah, I think. Uh, well, I mean, I can say for Wife Taffy too. She she definitely enjoyed it. She loved the story. She thought the voiceover was terrific, which I do want to echo it again. It was. So I, I think it made the game. To be honest, like I feel like if they didn't have yeah. those two people portraying the sisters, they 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 were just so critical to that going so. They had well. another Delilah. Yeah, exactly. All right, so there's Gone Home. You know what I like? What I like about Gone Home? Sure. Years after release, here is the fact that. Uh, I think it's kind of legitimized more games like that existing. Like I don't, I don't know if you have like a Firewatch if Gone Home doesn't come out and do relatively well. And even though it's annoying that every time it gets brought up, people like it, it's like a shorthand joke for people that don't like walking simulators at all, yeah. which I think is just lazy. But you know, you're entitled to your opinion. Um, I like that it has kind of brought those games out of the shadows a little bit. Anybody who thinks that like those games are taking over, go check out Steam new releases every day for like a week and you'll see like <laughs> half of a walking simulator and like 10 tower defense games. Yeah. So like if you're worried about shit ruining the industry is not your gone homes and your, you know, dear Esther's and stuff like that. But um, I like that it is kind of, I think it's galvanized people in this kind of like games as experiences category. And there's no reason you can't like fluidly go back and forth between one and one and the other. Like, Nick really liked Gone Home. Nick really liked Doom, right? Like, you can fit into both camps. Yeah. And uh, for me personally, I think that, that it kind of legitimized that for me as well. It was the first walking simulator that I was actually like, I like this game as as an experience. Mm -hmm. As a game, sure. Is there a, a failure condition? No, I don't necessarily buy into that being, like, the taxonomical definition of what makes a game a game anyway. But... Um, yeah, I, I think I got my point across. Sure. There's also good and bad in pretty much any genre, and if I was to point to the best of the walking simulators, even though I feel it's a bit derisive to use that term... Yeah, yeah I'd agree. I would say Gone Home and maybe The Beginner's Guide are the ones that I would say you should maybe look into. They're like, I don't know, there's something about them, there's just so much empathy in them that I don't feel in so many other things. It's more about the story, it's more about a human connection than it is about a gamified concept. Yeah, And I'm okay with that. Not everybody is, and that's fine if you're not. But for the people that really do feel something for those, I love these gen this genre. I hope it never goes away, and I'm glad that somebody came out to really legitimize it that way. Dear Esther didn't quite get the job done, although it's laid the groundwork. I think Gone Home finished it. Yeah, I think a lot of people look at Dear Esther as like the quintessential walking simulator, and I think it's sort of a bad example for it because like nick i agree with you in that i i sort of feel like these are better served as venues for personal in introspection rather than like yes. just a delivery of generic poetry or just like a, a story being told yeah. through a path like it just it dear esther while it was well honestly i didn't even really enjoy dear esther that much i played through the whole thing and i was just like okay that's that was pretty that, that was that was a thing but with Gone Home and with, um, I didn't actually even like the Beginner's Guide that much either, but with Firewatch at least, I, I really did invest myself pretty thoroughly into these stories, and it does a great job of uh, providing you the, ba the best medium by which to experience it. Firewatch is interesting because we, we praise um, Gone Home for throwing you for a loop and making you think it's a horror game when it's not. And Firewatch tries to make you think it's like a sci-fi thriller when it's not, but we kind of people lambasted oh, for that. Yeah. Well, because they went in too many different that, directions. That, I was going to say, it's, fragmented. It's, it's weird that they, they kind of took that inspiration and kind of, I feel like, went way too far, but tried to imitate what Gone Home did in a weird way. Yeah. yeah. And I kind of like the yeah, never made that connection. Too. Just, you know, throw this thought. Yeah. Throwing it out there. Cool. I don't know. I don't know what it is, like, for whatever reason, in Gone Home... I can't quite remember how the story beats happen. Before you get to the true ending, is there a moment that is like it's definitely there's no ghost? Yeah. Like, is there a moment like there's okay. like there's a point where you pick up one of the journals or like one of the uh, audio clues that you trigger for Sam to start talking to you, and then it becomes very clear that she's talking about like having a romantic involvement with this other girl, and then you're like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, well, there's there's not really anything else going on here, huh? So, not that that's a bad thing. I mean, like, you know, that, that begins to 
turn your head toward, oh, well, this is where we're actually going. Okay, if that makes sense. Yeah. It was just subtle enough that there's the possibility you could have said, oh, well, maybe I just imagined that, at least for me. Like, yeah, okay, sure. They made it sort of obvious, but at the same time, it wasn't like they beat you over the head with it a thousand times. No, yeah, they didn't. They, I mean, it, it, it's not, I think, yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to say whether or they not also it is a solid pulled away point. from that with enough left to finish the story so it wasn't on your mind anymore. Yeah. It wasn't like they misdirected you right to the end. It was like halfway through, they give you that resolution, and then you can focus on the actual story up until the end point. Yeah. Yeah, I'd agree with that. All right. Yeah, that's Gone Home. That was fun. I, li- I like talking about these old ones, man, because this, be- this was before roundtable time. This was before we even got to do our end of 2013. 2013. 2013. End of 2014 discussion. So that's, that's good. Uh, if you want to get Gone Home, it's available for 20 bucks over on Steam right now. And uh, that's going to bring us into uh, the end of the spoiler warning tags and the beginning of everybody's favorite segment. It's Ask Roundtable. Hooray! Every week. You say, yeah, you give me a little enthusiasm. Jesus Christ. Hooray! <laughs> Hooray! Emails every week to roundtableyt at gmail.com. Today's question comes from Brogan, who asks if you were making a game, what kind of game would it be? And what unusual or interesting design decisions? Do you think you might make? So let me let me save us all from having to come up with individual games ourselves. Let's let's pull this into a collective effort. So, no, no. What game? This is not going to end. What's going to be that Reddit thread that make? we see? This is going to be that Reddit Reddit thread we see every six months of like, well, why don't they just combine this game and this yeah. game and elements of this yeah. game? We'd have the perfect game. <laughs> Science based dragon. dragon game. All right. So yeah. what's hot right now? What's we got the Mosas? Those are those are killing it. The I think the card games are coming back in full force. We're gonna have Gwent rolling around now. We got Hearthstone obviously dominating that, right? So where's the where's the natural Mosa collectible card game fusion? Where does that happen? We need a setting, I think, to start well, off. Why don't we focus it. on how we'll monetize it first? Because that's what's really important. That is the critical element, yeah. Let's start with maybe four ninety nine to unlock heroes. Okay. And we'll form it around that. I think that sounds okay, good. So, are, we, <laughs> are we saying, like, it's going to be a, it's a CCG, <laughs> all right? But it's also a MOBA. So you're fighting, you know, minions and stuff. Uh-huh. But in order to fight another hero... The minute you like right click on them, you challenge them to a card duel. Yeah, and then you go like into Pokemon a card style. fight, and then you do you do like a Hearthstone round. Whoever wins that lives; the other one dies, and they can continue their push on their lane. Okay, okay, we can go, go with that. That's a that's a quirky new feature. Where does this take place? What this is the the world of the world Warcraft. of Warcraft. Oh, great <laughs> idea! We'll just license it. No big deal. <laughs> Uh, we'll make it in Unity because that's what you do. You just check the boxes. Yeah, no, oh, so there's got to be survival one. game elements if it's going to we'll be. We'll do local Unity. only, no online. You have to craft uh, your cards from like natural materials. So okay, wood, yeah, stone, uh, copper, iron, diamond. You need like the rare. You need the rare gems gold, in order to craft the best lapis, cards. Ruby, uh-huh. emerald, sapphire. And the most precious gems ever introduced in one collectible card game mosa of all time i think we got a winner going with this i think we got a winner what do we call it watch dogs 2 lost in san francisco <laughs> done. done ryan still statuettes based on <laughs> ryan, the you, haven't, you haven't said anything ryan 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 this, this, is, this is ask roundtable this is this is ryan, one of our viewers don't this fall. Question. <laughs> <laughs> i almost i almost died all right, that's a good name for the game. I almost died. I like that. Okay, we have a new collectible card game multiplayer online shooter arena called I Almost Died, wherein you craft your own collectible cards using natural resources found in the arena, and in order to fight anyone, you have to challenge them to a card duel, and if you win, you get to kill their minions. And every time you play, the map the map is different, just like a roguelite, so Ryan would enjoy it. Oh, perfect. Yeah, we cover all our bases so there. It goes from resources to cards, cards to pushing towers, uh-huh. towers to killing the enemy. We have everything. Yeah. We got a little tower defense in there, too. This is good shit. No one's going to be able much- to resist. Oh, no. Hold on. I lost everybody a second there. 
gone for a minute. Oh my god. What is happening? Hello. Hi. Hey. How's it going? Hello. Hello. Hey, we're back. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Hey, everybody. What's You're, up? You were going to start on something there, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Before we, we were taken away from yeah. one another. Uh, I was going to say my, my dream game is like, I don't even have to say it's like Isaac anymore. It's like Dead by Daylight. It's mechanics driven, replayable, and the sessions are short. Mm. Like 10 to 30 minute sessions. Even... Yeah. even Oh, God. All right. Well, we got half of it. <laughs> we got half of his idea. Oh, man. I think this is uh, is beginning to indicate that it's time to hang up the call here. Good God. Come on, Skype. You can do it. You can do it. Look, it's just me. It's just me in a show. Oh, how fun. Look at Bear. Look at Bear with his roundtable live crew. Oh boy. So let's push to the end here. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's see if we can do Nick's weird games. I desperately want to try. I want to work that in here. Thank you very much for the question, Brogan. We apologize that yes. it was uh, not able to be sufficiently. Did we answered. even answer it? We did. We but made we a did game. Our best. We made a game we called "I Almost Died." That was such a horrible answer. I thought it was a great <laughs> answer. I thought it was exactly what he wanted. Heroes never die. Heroes All never right. Die. So. Nick's weird games. Nick's time, weird right? games. If I if I Before dare, we lose the call again. if I dare swap to the live feed here, I'm terrified that we're gonna reveal everyone's secret personal oh, don't, info don't again. Don't do it. All right. Don't do it then. Uh, all right. Song. Since we're having such technical difficulties, why don't we do some Daft Punk? Like, <laughs> Ooh, I like up all that. night. Yeah. Again. For Nick's weird uh, games, that sounds good. Yeah. Is Nick's weird games? It's Nick's weird games. Is Nick's weird games? It's Nick's weird. I'm not just gonna <laughs> do that. <laughs> like, well, that's, uh... <laughs> all right. What's going on, guys? Hey, man. What you got? I got a game. It's already right there. It's Nick's weird games time. If you have never played Nick's weird games with us before, every week Nick uh, goes and grabs a weird game from his catalog of tons of weird games, and we try to guess what it is based on clues he provides. So you can play along in the chat. All right. I'm lobbing a softball over the plate for you guys yeah. because we oh. got, I think, a good 10 or 12 consecutive balls. Hang on, let's chat. Good. All right. All right, I'm good. Today's game is for PlayStation 3. Ooh. What? <laughs> Can like you imagine already. a world? Okay. <laughs> 2009 oh, action God. RPG yeah. uh -huh. developed Demon by Souls. Silicon Studios. Too human. The game features a unique style, presenting 2D retro-style graphics in a 3D environment. It's beautiful, Joe. It's beautiful, Joe, isn't it? It's, nah, it it's came out of game. GameCube in 2004. Beautiful Joe 2. Oh, I got a, I got a closed chat here. I didn't see it, though. Chat. All right, keep it up. I just saw holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, develops, developers are From Software and Silicon Studio. Fucking From Software, man. It's not, the, it's not Demon Souls, though. Not Demon Souls. Uh, published by Atlas. And is it an armored front mission core? Sweet it in three. I gotta stop saying no, it's not things, because then you're just gonna run the gauntlet until you get the right one. <laughs> is that not uh, a lot, uh, valid, like, solution to our problem? Yeah, don't do I'm us all, any favors. You yeah. can you can give me some guesses, but if you're just like, yes is or it, no, um, is it all of these games? <laughs> uh, uh, Okay, hang on. You said it's 2D, 2D art in a 3D world. So does it look pixel arty? Is that what you're saying? Kind of, yeah. Are we looking like... Oh, I think I'm on the right track. Uh, I think I know... Oh, fuck. Does it look like um, Cube World almost? I can't answer all these questions. Just, you yeah. gotta know what it is. <laughs> oh, fuck. Ah, fuck, fuck. I know the game. I saw this game. I played this game. I guarantee I... you've all seen this before. Oh, shit. I, uh, I could picture it in my head. Return to the golden age of gaming and embark on a nostalgia-laden Pixel Heroes quest across vast 3D landscapes and mysterious dungeons to save Dotnia from the legendary evil. Dotnia. Uh, uh, if you don't get it from that, no. Is it 3D no, no, dot, 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 dot Heroes? Yeah, that's what's yes. called 3D Dot Heroes. That's the game I was thinking nice. of. Nice! Yeah. Hey, look at us! It's actually technically 3D Dot Game Heroes, but close enough. Oh, that'll work. That, yeah, it looks like Cube World. Yes. Yes, that's exactly the game I was thinking well of. Well done! Good job, Brian, good job. Yeah. I could... go they basically team? just recreated like a Zelda overworld in voxels, and it was kind of fun. 
Fortnite. Yeah, this came out for like Xbox Live indie games. It but it might have been like a total Did it? like unlicensed recreation of it. It oh. must have been either a prototype or something after the fact, because I thought this was exclusive only on PS3. I thought it was a PS3 thing only too. Looks like uh, I'm pretty sure that they just ripped it off. Looks like Sesk in the chat was the uh, first one to get that one. Or Sesku? Sesquay? Sesquay. Sesky. Sesky. Sesk. Something like that. Sesk. Sesk. Thank you. Or, uh, yeah, congrats. congrats. Well done. Good job. Okay. 3D Dot Game Heroes is a terrible name for a game. That is a by bad the way. name. Yeah, it was extremely yes. hard to remember the name of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, good game. We did it, man. We got another one. And the call didn't drop. Mm hmm. Thank God. Okay. Well, we did it. We did it. And thank you very much for watching this episode of Roundtable Live. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you missed any part of today's show, you can catch the VOD over on our YouTube channels, Mathis Games, Rockley Smile, or Bear Taffy. You can also catch the show over on iTunes and SoundCloud. You can subscribe on iTunes. Also rate the show five stars over there. We appreciate that as well. You can follow us on Twitter at RoundTablePC. You can catch the show discussion over on the subreddit. That's RoundTablePC, or sorry, RoundTablePodcast.reddit.com. And follow us live here on Twitch every Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific. You can hit that follow button and be notified when we go live. We also want to thank our patrons over on patreon.com slash roundtable who have been supporting the show. We want to especially thank those at the $20 level or above, which include Julian Avelsgaard, Scrody119, Polcat, Greenlight, Mavier, Oren Saltzman, Christopher Flagg, General Crunk, Jonathan Graham, Matt, Alexander Spillman, Mitz Scarab, Brizzlebrit, Mediocrities, Eric Schooley, Smurfet, Supermana Man, Justin Positron, and Logan Ray. Thank you guys very much for your continued support over there on the Patreon page. We really appreciate that. And thank you very much for watching the show today here as well. And we will see you next week is E3 week. So there will actually be uh, E3 rebroadcasts here on this channel. Those two will be at E3, but I'll be here with uh, maybe Nick, maybe whoever else wants to join me. We'll be rebroadcasting the E3 Mouth shows here on this stream. Rob. Yeah, and probably Rob get and those Austin, guys I think there. all of us want to do mm-hmm. that. All right, right also on. Also send us questions for yes, Roundtable. Yes, please do. Roundtableyt at gmail.com. And uh, thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you next time. Peace out. Come on, man. A little bit more than that. (laughs) Fine. Fine, that's what we get. All right. Goodbye. I don't know what to do with my hands.